Hello and welcome to another new episode of Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast. This episode is all Oscar Best Picture winners. So just in time for the nominations to come out and Oscar season, you know, in full buzz. Hope you enjoy. Hello, everyone. It's Tony and the Movie Guy. And tonight, uh, Miss Money Annie is not with me, but uh, I'm joined by Matt Sharp. Say hi, Matt. Hey, guys. <laughs> All right, good. So what we're going to do, which I think is going to be kind of fun, is uh, you. I let, I let you pick the topic tonight. Yep. Uh, you're yep. in, he's in town from uh, Florida. He's in Los Angeles, and you're... You're doing screenwriting and stuff like that, right? That's awesome. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, I got some uh, exciting meetings, you know, so we'll see where it goes. But yeah. Big man on campus. Okay, cool. <laughs> and you do some acting and stuff, Matt, which is funny. Remember last time I saw you at a party a couple months ago, I was like, I just saw you on TV last night. It That's was like right. some ad for, what was it? Uh, that that one was a, a doctor. That was a LASIK Vision Institute. That's right. So it's kind of funny. Uh, you know, I'm based out of Florida. Um, I do a lot of acting in the Southeast. So that's become really big, and especially commercial out there. You do a lot of commercials? A lot of commercials. So doctors, lawyers, you know, stuff like that. It's kind of my my zone, if you will. And that particular one, I've seen like... That particular one. Several times. And you said it's been running for how long? Uh, It's four years now. That's crazy. Yeah, usually you have a commercial and, you know, if it goes for two months, that's a great run. You know That's I mean? so funny. Uh, for whatever reason, that one just keeps going. Has has, has all the legs in the world. So. Yeah, so I saw it with my wife. I was like, I know that dude. That's Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where can people find you, actually? Do you have like a you know some online media where people can um, find your acting Yeah, work? yeah. I do have a website. Uh, it's the, that's T-H-E, mattsharp.com. Uh, that would be all my acting and so forth. Uh, cool. If you want to find me on Instagram, uh, that would be at uh, uh, actor. Um, so if you find me on there, then you'll have all my, uh, activities, uh, both acting and screenwriting, you know, cause now it's going to be a lot more in LA and around the world. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, he's a good man. So check him out guys. And mm-hmm. for your screenwriting, uh, what kind of, uh, topics, what's the genres? Yeah. You know, um, I started with feature films. Uh, I've gotten myself into TV and stuff like that. I specialize mostly in, uh, action films and, uh, drama. Nice. So that's kind of my my go to. That's my you know, bread and butter there. All right, man. Well, I'm rooting for you. I, I look forward to watching some of your films soon. <laughs> That'll be great. Thank you. All right. Well, here's the topic that he picked, which I think is a great one, which is best picture Oscar winning films. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And at first, I was like, you know, we could select, you know, maybe twenty of our favorite films and discuss them. And then I thought, screw it. You know, if we're going to go in, let's just go all in. That's uh, that's the only way to do it. Exactly. That's what I do. So we're going to go through every single Oscar-winning Best Picture film. Everyone. Okay. So just so the listeners know, the Oscars started officially in 1927. So I have a list of every single film that was nominated for Best Picture and won the Oscar. That's 90 years we're going to spend. So go to the bathroom, come back, listen, <laughs> buckle your seatbelt. Exactly. Strap in. Exactly. No, it's going to be fun. Now, I also, the reason I wanted to do this was I found the list so interesting because like 1960 upwards, I've seen most of them. Before that, I really haven't. Uh, you're not alone. Yeah. You're not alone. Same. Yeah. But I'm going to mention them. So I'm yeah. going to start from the bottom of the list. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to go through them. And obviously, the ones that we have a a love for and the ones we're much more familiar with, we're going to kind of do a deep dive on. Sound good? That sounds good to me. All right. You ready? Ready. All right. Here we go. So this is Oscar-winning Best Picture Films. Okay. And also, another thing that's interesting is there's a lot of films on this list that you've never heard of. Yeah. Yeah. Same. And there's a lot of films that were nominated that probably have stood the test of time a lot better. Yeah, there were there were a few years for sure where I thought uh, I I remember that year a particular film, 
But that's not the film that won Best Picture. That's right. So, so that's a really interesting point. Okay, good. So here we go. So I'm going to start 1927. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know what the first film is that won Best Picture officially? Because I thought I did, and I found out when doing this that I was wrong. Yeah, uh, honestly, I didn't know the same thing. Uh, I th I had a very uh, uh, strong picture in my mind of uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, but it turns out that was a couple years later. That was not the first one. That's right. So uh, I, actually, I knew of that film. I always thought that because I consider myself like a movie aficionado, mm -hmm. I always thought it was Wings. Mm. Actually, that was the second one. That's right. So Wings was the first film that officially won Best Picture. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen it. It's a silent black and white movie. But there's a film called Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans that won something called like the best feature film d you know, debut or something, Oscar. Yeah, it, it definitely – was it called Oscars at that point? Because I don't know if it, it was. It wasn't even called Oscars, yeah, it wasn't. no. But that's the first film. So anyway, I've never seen it. Yeah. I'm not a huge buff for uh, the, the black and white. Some of them I love. Same. But that's interesting. So mm -hmm. outside of that, it was then, I'm just going to kind of go through some of these because mm -hmm. I, I find it interesting. Uh, the Broadway Melody, 1929. Right. Never heard of it. I believe that was the first big, big, you know, musical, big numbers, huge numbers, that kind of thing. So I think that's what it was. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. And then as you mentioned, 1930, All Quiet on the Western Front. Right. Have that, you seen it? I have seen that. So have and I. that was uh, probably the earliest solid film I can think of. Right. Um, you know, in those days, there was a lot of over the top or even silent actors who got into doing the talkies and so forth. They didn't really know exactly how to do it. Right. Um, this was the first one where it was very realistic. Right. Um, so I was actually taken aback the first time I saw it, seeing it in a modern age. And, you know, obviously the technology and everything like that sometimes doesn't really hold the test of time but right. the acting itself was was solid i mean this is 1930 and it was solid for what you would expect today yeah and that film has like it's quite eerie yes like yeah i don't know what it is about some of those silent movies but mm -hmm. it, i found it quite spooky yeah um i yeah, watched it, it not long mm -hmm. ago maybe mm -hmm. five ten years ago mm -hmm. i just you know i knew it was one of the first so i was fascinated and right I actually watched the whole thing, and it, it was quite interesting. So mm -hmm. anyway, good. So that's one we have both have some familiarity yeah. with way back in 1930. All right, and then there's a Cimarron, 1931. Never heard of it. Nope, nope. Grand Hotel, 1932. I've have heard, you heard of, that of that one uh, just because of Greta Garbo, but just in passing. I oh, can't she's say in that. it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I've heard yeah, of She was that. the star of that one. So. Okay. Cavalcade, 1933. It happened one night, 1934. Now, that's Clark Gable. That's one of, yeah, that's probably the the one that put him on the map. Have you seen it? I have not seen it Me in neither. particular, <laughs> um, but that one is probably one of the most famous titles of all time. Right. I, so. I know that's a very famous film. Right. Again, we're probably going to roll through these way early ones quite mm -hmm. fast, but mm -hmm. that's a film I actually want to check out because yeah. I've heard of it a lot. Right. All right. Let's see what else. Uh, Mutiny on the Bounty, 1935. I have heard of that movie. I've yes. never seen it. Have you? It's another Clark Gable movie. Oh, that's Clark Gable, too. That's correct. He was a busy man back in the yes, day. Yes, he was. All right. The Great Ziegfeld, 1936. <laughs> no, I have nothing on that one. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. Uh, the Life of Emile Zola, 1937. I've never even heard of That's also another one. No. All right. You Can't Take It With You, 1938. Yes. This is uh, James Stewart. Um, wow. this was, um, this is also one of those that kind of sticks out in terms of pre 1960s, one of the star movies, really. Have you seen it? Um, I've seen bits and pieces of it. It is, it is quite good. Oh, wow. Uh, not quite in terms of like all quiet on the Western front where it really holds like sticks for what you could watch today. Right, I remember um, that film. But solid for that time. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. And then of course, one of the most renowned films of all time gone mm -hmm. with the wind 1939 that's right clark gable Again. vivian lee mm -hmm. frankly my dear i don't give a damn exactly one of the most quotable films ever uh to that point i don't remember exactly but the box office when you put it in modern days like goes up against like still Titanic the or something pop, yeah successful film um, box office yeah wise. fun fact on that one um that was is the one and only best picture uh winner ever where they had the premiere not in L.A. Is that right? Where did they have it? Do you they know? Atlanta. 
because oh. it was shot around Atlanta for the most, well, like a bunch of the scenes and stuff like that. Look at you, Matt. You came with the big guns. Well, there we go. <laughs> have you seen Gone with the Wind? I have. It's classic. You okay. know, it's classic. It's... I need to watch it. I, yeah. I've seen bits and pieces of it, yeah. but I, I have to admit it's a film I've never really gravitated towards. It yeah. doesn't hold much interest, but I have to check it out. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a very well done movie. Obviously, for that time, it would have been like just blown away. Breaking, yeah. Totally groundbreaking. Um, Isn't it like four yeah. hours long? It's very long. Right. It's very <laughs> long. You know, we're getting into uh, Christopher Nolan territory here. Yeah, but I love so, those movies. <laughs> which for then, it was like right. a feature film. A long feature film was, you know, an hour and 30 minutes. That's crazy. So, yeah. yeah, well, the legacy of Gone with the Wind is incredible. So that's, yeah. you know, that's something I'm going to have to check out one day. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. 1940, Rebecca. Ever heard of it? No. Not 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 that one. All righty. Uh, 1941, How Green Was My Valley. I've actually heard of it, but I have no idea what it's about. <laughs> yeah, you got me on that one. That's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's why I think it's kind of interesting going through these really early ones. Mm -hmm. And and please, listeners, don't be offended. We're not saying these films are bad. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're fairly young, yeah. um, you know. Um, but I, I wanted to mention them because I thought it would be fascinating to go from the bottom all the way to present. Yeah. All right, let's continue here. Um, did I say uh, Miss Miniver, 1942? You did not, but yeah, that's the next one. Have you seen it? I have not seen that one either. Okay, yeah, I know. Um, yeah. By the way, Matt's all prepared. He's got his laptop open. <laughs> so he, he's actually like checking off the list to make yeah. sure I'm right. That's <laughs> good, keeping me yeah. in place. Yeah. All right, and then, of course, the next one, which again, it's amazing that films like Gone with the Wind and then this one, which are so old, are still yeah. so renowned. Because yeah. the next one is 1943, Casablanca. That is correct. I mean, that's Humphrey Bogart, Ingrid Bergman. Um, you know, well, it's actually not play it again, Sam. He says something like, play it, blah, play as time goes by. Right. And everyone misquotes it as, you know, play it again, Sam. But it's right. also, you know, uh, we'll always have Paris, mm -hmm. you know, and in, mm -hmm. in all the gin joints mm -hmm. in town, she had to pick mine. It's got so many, this could be the beginning of a beautiful relationship, so many quotable lines one of the most well-known movies of all time and you've seen and it what's, of course right? i have definitely seen it okay, multiple good. times um what i found interesting unique about that one was really it was the first time that i can recall any movie especially on that level like broad release at that sort of time where it was not necessarily a happy ending yeah, it's heartbreaking that's what i was gonna yeah, it's say hard. it was a first major movie to really do that right and i have to admit again I've seen bits and pieces. I know the ending, and I've seen the ending many times. I don't think I've ever watched the film from beginning to end, and I have really? to. I, I don't think I have, honestly. That's interesting. I need to. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, It definitely, that is one of the films that does stand the test of time because it, it has so many techniques with the filming and with the acting and the screenwriting and everything like that, which are still used today in, I think, a lot of uh, ways that it did establish what we do now with films um but That's yeah incredible. definitely that that ending just because it was so different I, I mean can you imagine i don't think we would all still be remembering it or revering it the way it was if they ended together right i mean he gives up the girl for the greater good basically exactly. and he lets her he saves her husband yeah and see i haven't even seen the movie all the way through but no. i've literally i yeah. know the story i've watched many parts of it and I've, yeah. I've seen the ending yeah it's a beautiful film and i mean bogart was he just exuded cool yeah, an amazing did. leading man yeah. i find it very interesting how leading man uh status has really changed over the decades as well very much so so different but uh, so different. i mean casablanca yeah. uh, such a classic film yeah. yeah all right good next up is going my way 1944 you ever seen that I haven't. Uh, no, there's Bing Crosby. Um, oh, wow, it's Bing but, Crosby. Uh, but to be honest with you, I don't know a whole lot about his career, and I, I did not see that one. Isn't he the guy who sang White Christmas? You might be right. That sounds correct, <laughs> but don't quote me on that. Okay, I'm yeah. pretty sure that's how I, I thought he was a singer. Yeah. All right, anyway, let's see. Uh, 1945, The Lost Weekend. Never heard of it. Okay. No, me either. Uh, the Best Years of Our Lives, 1946. Ever heard of that? Again, no. And there's not even a single star in it that I would even recognize. Interesting. Which was interesting for those times. Because yeah. in those times, it, you know, you get the Humphrey Bogarts, you get you know, stuff Gable, like... Right, Spencer exactly. Tracy. You get the leading man or the leading woman, and yeah. that's what carries everything. 
That's interesting. So, yeah. Okay, Gentleman's Agreement, 1947. I've heard of it. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it. Yeah, I've only seen bits and pieces of this, so I don't remember the entire movie. Uh, that is Gregory Peck. So, oh, wow. Well, he was a big yeah, name. Big name at that time. So Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Hamlet, 1948. So yeah. I have seen that because it's yes. Sir Lawrence Olivia, yeah. who yeah. apparently was a total douchebag in real life. But was an incredible but actor. the master yeah. the, the godfather if you will the total of modern thespian acting. exactly and yeah. british i have to say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go <laughs> i like it have you seen hamlet i have okay i have you I liked have. it you know it, i liked it it was a very good performance obviously from uh lawrence olivier but uh for me i'm not a huge person on um shakespeare shakespeare okay I don't know. I think I just had a lot of bad experiences in high school trying to <laughs> read all of them and, and having to uh, to understand every single line in sonnet. <laughs> to be or not to be. Yeah, that that is, the is the question. <laughs> Actually, no. One, 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 I remember one assignment we had to do in English class. Uh, I think it was eighth grade. We had to memorize that whole thing. Are you serious? Do, I, I would not be able to do it now to be able to do exactly what you did, like three lines oh or God. whatever. But we did. And we you, had to, our grade was based on it. That's crazy. Do you know Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean? Yes. He's a British comedian. Yes. Okay, he does this incredible sketch. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know I'm digressing here, Go but ahead. I've got to mention it. I love it. it. It's, um, he does this comedy sketch. I'm sure you can find it on, on you know, online, iTunes, mm -hmm. which is basically him um, being like the editor for mm -hmm. William Shakespeare mm -hmm. and going through his sonnets and his plays. Like, <laughs> I can just see him in the Mr. Bean face. Oh, but like, it's oh, so funny. Wow. So he's yeah. basically telling him, they're basically debating yeah. and arguing, you know, like the, the original verse of to be or not to be, which mm -hmm. is like six lines, you know, six paragraphs long. Right. And then him like basically muscling it all the way down to to be or not to be. That is the question. <laughs> it's really funny. It's like 10 minutes long. Wow, and he's like, Willie, my friend, you know, we need to, you know, that's, we just need to bring this down. The audience yeah. doesn't like it. You know, yeah. we want to get butts on seats. And, you know, the seats are really hard, so we need to make everything short and tight and poppy. It's so <laughs> funny. Anyway, you got to check it out. That is funny. You, you know, it's funny about him, actually, um, Mr. The Bean, Mr. Bean character and all that kind of stuff, is that it's portrayed as he's someone who's almost an imbecile. Right. right? It's funny because he's an imbecile. But in real life, he's super smart. Oh, Rowan Atkinson. He's apparently like genius. Mensa yeah. and, you know, double PhD, something like that. It's he's crazy smart yeah he, which is he's completely a completely the opposite yeah, yeah. He, i mean he's a you know national treasure in great britain yeah the guy's incredible yeah all right let's see let's move on here all right all the king's men 1949 mm -hmm. i haven't seen it but it sounds like a really well-known film do you know what that is uh, yeah i know it but the only reason why i know it is because it's based on a book and mm. i have read the book so i would assume it's the same and if it's anywhere near what the book portrays then yeah it's it would be a very good movie i think it's like so. a political film isn't yes, it about very government much. In, in, in the south they attempted to yeah. remake it with sean penn in the early 2000s and it crashed and burned really yeah i remember that because the hmm. cast was phenomenal yeah he had just won an oscar i think for mystic river i was gonna say mystic river yeah, yeah and it, it, uh, sean penn's one of my favorite actors that, and it just kind of came and went it was really bizarre that's crazy because yeah. that seems that would that would be like a slam dunk for i him. would think it would be huge yeah and it wasn't yeah. Okay, next, All About Eve. So I have to admit, I haven't seen it, but that is Betty Davis, Betty 1950. Davis. Uh, have you seen only. All About Eve? Uh, just here and there. Um, this Bits was not a, a movie that spoke to me okay. necessarily. That's I mean, funny. I don't know if that's the male in me. No, but that's okay. I mean, to me, that's <laughs> but, why there's yeah. thousands of different movies. And mm -hmm. I always find it funny when people go batshit crazy over opinions on films. Mm -hmm. That's why there's all kinds of films in different genres. It's mm -hmm. okay for one person to love something and another person to hate it. It's oh, yeah. okay. I, I have some definite opinions when we get on the later <laughs> years, so, you know. All right, well, let's stay it. friends, okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, here we go. Okay, An American in Paris, which made me really happy. Uh, 1951, yeah. Gene Kelly. Gene Kelly. Have you seen that movie? I have. Okay, so um, I've mentioned this in the podcast uh, mm -hmm. earlier episodes. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid growing up, yeah. My dad had every single one of the Marilyn Monroe movies on VHS mm. and every single one of the Gene Kelly movies on oh, VHS. Interesting. I watched them all a hundred times yeah. before I was like 12. Right. So uh, I've seen American in Paris, I don't know, 25 times. I absolutely loved it. I mean, obviously, Singing in the Rain is my favorite one of his, but Brigadoon. Mine as well. You know, On the Town, so many right. great films. 
to me, I mean, he is one of those really early leading men mm -hmm. that really spoke to me. Mm -hmm. Even more than like Bogart and stuff, probably yeah. because I saw more of his stuff, like Gunga Din as well. Do you remember Gunga Din? Uh, really yeah, old vaguely. movie. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of it, but I haven't seen I, it. I love Gene Kelly. I thought yeah. he was just so charming. Yeah. For, for me, it was really with Gene Kelly is because of his showmanship. Like, right. He was an entertainer. 100%. You know, it's it's kind of like a, a Bruno Mars now. Like, you pay, <laughs> you would go to see it. Yeah. I don't care what you sing. Like, you know, yeah. that's the way he was. No matter what movie it was in, you knew that it was going to be an entertainment. So. Yeah. And Gene Kelly is an interesting thing. He kept acting like into his 70s. Yeah, he did. I remember watching this movie. I mean, it wasn't a big movie, but it came out in like the late 70s, maybe even the early 80s. And Gene Kelly was in it. Mm -hmm. I, I remember I was like a kid and I was like, holy crap, he's still going. He's still alive. <laughs> it was fascinating. Yeah. 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 All right. Anyway, yeah. So uh, An American in Paris, that's 1951. Okay. And then 1952, The Greatest Show on Earth. Have you ever seen that? Do you know I what that is? I have that. Uh, no, I have not seen that one. That's James Stewart. Oh, So that was very well known actor, role for yeah. him. But no, I have not seen that one. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, I've never seen it. I've heard yeah. of it. I've never seen it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the next one, 1953, From Here to Eternity. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what that film's about. I've never seen it, but it's immortalized in my brain as the guy and the girl on the beach embraced kissing. Like, the, it's so iconic. That's what I know about it, too. <laughs> Do you know anything about that film? I, I really don't. Isn't that I really funny? Don't. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think that was also based on a book. Yeah, I have no but clue. And I that's, I that. always yeah. remember that mm -hmm. image. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've even seen that actual clip from the film many times, but I've never yeah. watched the movie. I don't even know what it's about. <laughs> Same. Maybe they gave him the Oscar just because that's, that one scene was so amazing. That's so funny, <laughs> huh? Okay. Yeah. Um, I've talked about this film recently because, mm -hmm. believe it or not, I just watched it six months ago. Mm -hmm. 1954, On the Waterfront, Marlon Brando. Yeah, that's correct. And then Eva Marie Saint is in it. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen On the Waterfront? I have many, many years ago. So I only remember bits and pieces, one of the early movies that I that I watched. Do you remember liking it? Do you remember much about it? I didn't like it. Okay. I, I mean, that's just, you know, me. Um, you know, Marlon Brando, obviously, that was really the movie that kind of really got him going. Right. And became that uh, the first real uh, you know, method actor. Right. You know, which was not really done before then. Right. Uh, there was a whole transition. Obviously, the early days, you had uh, people going from silent movies to talkies. And so that was a whole transition and getting to that. And then you got into, okay, big musicals, big numbers, stuff like that, you know. Um, so there was a lot of comedies, and that was what was popular. And then this was really the movie that made that transition to real, like, gritty right. acting. I'll tell so. you this. Um, no, no, I get that. I, yeah. I watched it about six months ago. It's mm -hmm. been on my list because I... I've literally been chipping away at for over a decade now trying to watch all the classic films. Got it. And um, obviously I've seen The Godfather and some later movies in Brando's life, but I never really got like, what was the enigma? What was the the magic of Brando? I completely agree. I uh, will tell you though, yeah. when I finished On the Waterfront, I kind of got it because I actually loved that movie. I, I was so surprised. Hmm with a film so old, yeah. how much I loved it. And awesome. I, you know, I really thought, and it's okay, we can still be friends, but I, I was, <laughs> I was, here. I was actually blown away with this performance. I would say yeah. if, if you love cinema and film, you might mm -hmm. want to um, revisit re it. I'll have to, to rewatch it. Yeah. Uh, not just his, I mean, his performance mm -hmm. was electric. He just, he yeah. owned the screen. Yes, he did. Eva Marie Saint was absolutely just luminous and gorgeous that she was the main lead. Mm -hmm. But the story, I mean, it was a very mature story mm -hmm. for a film so old that I, I was completely absorbed from beginning to end. And it's like a three-hour movie. So yeah. um, I highly recommend it, and I totally see why it stood the test of time. That's right. But, but it, it's okay. Again, as you said, mm -hmm. not, not every movie speaks to the same person the same way. It's right. just the way it is, right. which is fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Let's see. Um all right, 1955, Marty. I've never heard of it. Nope, never seen it, never heard of it. Okay, good. All right, um, 1956, Around the World in 80 Days. I have seen that. I haven't seen the original. I saw the Disney remake. Are you serious with Jackie Chan? Yeah. 
I, I was very young, you know. Okay. <laughs> um, so. I remember it being like a, a fun romp. Yeah. Um, I was kind of surprised to see it on this, this list because I didn't it, think it, it was a like surprising a surprising movie to see as your best picture. Right, best picture of the year. Yeah. Um, it, uh, look, I'll tell you, it wasn't hugely memorable to me, but um, yeah. it, it was a fun film. Okay. Okay, next. Um, the Bridge on the River Kwai, 1957. Have you seen it? I have not seen that one. I'm going to tell you this. Go ahead. I watched that about three months ago for the okay. first time. Uh, blew me away. Did it, did it? Okay. It's um it's Sir Alec Guinness, who yes. everyone knows as mm-hmm. Obi Wan Kenobi from right. Star Wars: A New Hope. Mm-hmm. Um, he won an Oscar. The film won an Oscar. It was one of those big epic David Lean movies. It's like three and a half hours long. It is a very somber movie. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have a happy ending at all. Wow. It's where the famous line, you know, oh the madness, the madness comes from. Um, I, I highly recommend it. Okay. It's not just a great mm. war movie. It's all about like leadership and, you know, the human spirit and perseverance, but also just like almost like compromising your integrity and like getting stuck on a specific course mm-hmm. that actually is just totally destructive. Uh, the film really spoke to me. I was really impressed with it. Um, and again, I talk about it quite passionately because I only saw it a few months ago for the mm-hmm. first time. And I was like, wow, this really does stand the test of time. It totally deserves that best picture status and, you know, to be a classic. Definitely. I, I mean, what I do know on it is it is generally generally regarded as one of the top in terms of, you know, you make a list of this is the, uh, you know, the top best picture winners. Right. That's usually not up near the top. Yeah, it, it deserves it. That yeah. film was freaking good. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, 1958, GG. I've Classic. never heard of it. Have you seen it? Really? You haven't seen this? I, I haven't, so tell me about wow, it. Wow, okay. Well, GG was a very popular one. Um, it was a um, uh, kind of a little bit of a musical and everything like that. A little more comedy notes to it. Uh, very well done. Uh, the reason why I know is because my mother was really into older movies like this. And then my sister became obsessed with it. With this movie. With this particular movie. So she like I, made you watch it? <laughs> yeah, it was one of those things, you know. She got the, you know, she was older, so she got to boss me around sometimes. And she would put, that was the movie she would put in. It sounds like you were kind of thankful that you got to see it, though. Yeah. Like it's actually a good film. It's a very good film. What's it about? Um, I don't remember the full the <laughs> plot and details and everything like that. But I do remember it was very well done. Even for my knowledge as a kid, it was, you know... Um, I don't know. It, so it's not it a was, film you revisit. It was you not just, for me. Not you for remember me. it being like a well done movie when you yes, saw it. It was a very well done movie for for what it was and everything like that. But not my cup of tea. I mean, to give you an idea, my favorite movie all all time is Ghostbusters, and my second favorite of all time <laughs> is Aliens. So I love them both. She had GG, and I had Aliens and Ghostbusters. Very different genres. Very different. Well, look, I've so, never even seen it. Yeah. I had never even heard of it. Mm-hmm. So it's okay. You're okay. you're already one step ahead of me. Yeah. All right, we'll move on. So the next one is 1959, mm-hmm. Ben-Hur. Have you seen Ben-Hur? Yes, okay. Charleston Heston. Classic, classic, classic. Yeah. Here's what blew me away about Ben-Hur. It's so funny. I just watched it this year as well. Mm-hmm. I've seen the chariot scene yeah. many times. Yeah. I watched it from start to finish because, again, it's about a four-hour long movie. It's very It's also boring. got you know religious elements, but it's, yep. a very, it's like a Roman epic. Yeah. Um, I absolutely loved it. I, I thought it was incredible. And here's what blew me away. Mm. Last year, with all the modern technology and CGI and special effects, they remade Ben-Hur I and remember. released it. Yeah. And it really pissed me off because the lead was Jack Houston, mm-hmm. who is Angelica Houston's son, mm-hmm. who I really like as an actor. Have, did you ever watch Boardwalk Empire? Yes. He was fantastic. He was the guy with the disfigured face. Yes. Um, and that film, unfortunately pretty much killed his career Mm -hmm. because they released it with him uh, not a proven star and with all this cgi and it still completely tanked and i tried to watch it Mm -hmm. the new one and it was terrible i watched the original and and especially the chariot scene was 10 times more thrilling isn't that interesting that is very interesting yeah and i would completely agree with that i I only saw maybe five ten minutes of the uh the remake and oh, i just so uh, i know it was just it was you know because i had the the original in my mind right so i was like this is an abomination I will, i'm done you know 
Yeah, so. and talk about a man's man, Charlton Heston. Yes. I don't know what yes. people think about his you know, personal views and things yeah. like that, but just as an actor and charisma, yeah. he was such a leading man. Yeah, he was. Right up there. John Wayne, Charlton Heston. I mean, you know, that, that was really kind of your list when you made that kind of thing. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, so of course, Ben-Hur. I mean, that's a total classic. Mm-hmm. Okay, this next film, I hear so much accolades for, and I have not seen it. You haven't? It. No, it's 1960, The Apart. Department. Now that's Shirley MacLaine, right? Uh, yes, that I is believe. Jack Lemmon and Shirley MacLaine. Have you seen this film? I have not, and Apparently it is also it's one of the ones. It's also one of the ones that is right up the very top right. of this is the top ones of Apparently all time. Apparently, it's one of the most charming romantic comedies of all time. That's correct. I need to watch that movie, so I, I'm going to put it I'm on my list. You. My list to watch. Um, ne- well, I guess early next year, since we're approaching the end of 2017. Exactly. Okay, good. Next one, West Side Story, 1961. I love that movie. Absolute classic. Yeah, that fil- the film is fantastic. Yeah. Look, I don't love all musicals. That is a musical yeah. that transcends, you know, any kind of feety weety. It, it's such a, it, I mean, the music has such a key part to the story, mm-hmm. to the scenes. It's, it's so artistically done. I love it. That's right. That's right. I, I believe it was one of, you know, there's all these different uh, big musicals over time that have done in Hollywood. And this was one of the best examples of the music uh, being a character in the film. Right. Exactly. So usually so it's well like, said. okay, it's the star and this star can really dance or this star can really sing or something like that. And this one, it was the music. The music right. was the character. Like this is an audio podcast, but the, the, the clicking with the... Remember? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I don't know how that will exactly. uh, you just, communicate but honestly, the audio podcast. Think about, think about how iconic that is. You just hear that. Yeah. If somebody does that for five seconds, you know exactly where it's from. Yeah, exactly. West Side Story. And that was 1961. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. That's pretty nuts. So, so yeah. And then isn't that it's based on Romeo and Juliet, right? Uh, essentially. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so West Side Story, fantastic movie. Okay, the next one. Okay, I think we're going to get into the juicy movies now. Yes, we are. Uh, which is funny because we're only in the mid-60s, but actually mm-hmm. from here on up, I think I've seen almost every single one of these films. Not okay. to brag, but okay. I, I have. I was actually quite surprised. I was like, wow, I've actually watched most of these. Nice. So the, the next one is 1962 Lawrence of Arabia. And I'm just going to sound like I'm boasting now. I watched it this year. Yeah. I, I told uh-huh. you, I've been ch- chipping away at all are, these Are you classics. going with all the British actors this year? Because that's another Alec Guinness. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. That's Peter O'Toole. Well, Peter O'Toole, oh, so but Alec, Alec Guinness, Guinness is in it as in well. It. Yeah, he plays like a a, a Saudi Arabian-like that's king right. or something. That's right. Talk yeah. about that for acting. A yeah. British guy, to, you know. And yeah. actually, he has makeup on yeah. in the film. Yeah, which for that time was pretty groundbreaking as well. Okay, so Lawrence mm-hmm. of Arabia. Um, I mean, number one. Peter O'Toole was robbed of the Oscar. That has been considered for decades that, I mean, he should have won. Agreed. He was incredible. That was his first major starring movie. Yes, it was. He blew it out of the park. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, I mean, the direction, the set. That's a David Lean movie as well. The same guy who did um, The Bridge on River Kwai. I think that's correct. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you are correct. Yeah. Um, the cinematography, mm-hmm. the scope. The uh, the aesthetics of that film mm-hmm. is absolutely gorgeous. It's, it's it's epic on every level. On every level, yeah. um, also for a film that's again like almost four hours long or something, mm-hmm. I was surprised with how fast it flew by mm-hmm. and how engrossed I was with it. So again, I've only seen it once in full just earlier this year. Have you seen that film several times or only once? Okay, only once. Yeah, I want to watch it again. It mm-hmm. left me wanting to see it again. I think there would be different facets to it. Um, it's quite a heavy movie as well. Yes, it is. You know, it's quite brutal. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, it just it tells the story of, of Lawrence of Arabia. But that, I mean, that film is so deserving of the best picture. I agree. Incredible movie. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Um, Tom Jones, 1963. I think that's Albert Finney. It is. That is correct. Have I have not seen it. With, have you? I haven't, but I've, haven't? I've heard of the film a lot. I've heard of the film as well. Um, whether this is true to uh, the movie or not, um, I do know that that's on the lower end of a, a list you put together. Of. Oh, it's not so renowned yeah, anymore? No, it's, I think that year was a little bit weak on terms of the Best Picture uh, nominees. Well, when I hear about it, I always think of Tom Jones, the singer. I'm yeah. like, yeah. was he in it? And then I find out it was <laughs> Albert Finney and he won the Oscar for it. So That's it's right. kind of fun. That's right. 
Okay, good. Um, the next one, 1964, My Fair Lady. Audrey Hepburn. I have watched that movie. Yes. Um, that movie is so freaking charming. Mm-hmm. Um, who, who's the main lead as well? The man, do you know? Uh, Rex Harrison. Rex Harrison, who mm-hmm. also did Dr. Doolittle, uh, which as a kid I loved. That film is absolutely charming. It's a musical as well. Have you seen it? Uh, I have. I've seen it multiple times. This is one of the movies from that particular time period where I have seen it more than one time. Yeah, me too. So, yeah. Especially as a kid. I mean, I grew up with a lot of, you know, uh, girls and you know friends who were, yeah. who were ladies. So I got mm-hmm. to see a lot of those movies like Grease and, and this one. Oh, yeah. But look, us buff men, uh, we like good films like this. Because yeah. My Fair Lady was a, it was a dazzling, charming movie. I really enjoyed yeah. it. Although I also liked Audrey Hepburn from a guy perspective, I thought she was she was just gorgeous. So. It's funny, yes. Yeah. I have to admit, she never did it for me. No, no. no. Uh, my, my wife loves her. Roman yeah. Holiday is one of her favorite films. Yeah, I do not like Breakfast at Tiffany's. I find mm. it so racist, and I I don't like the story. I much. would agree with. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. can totally see that. Yeah. Uh, Audrey Hepburn, I was more Marilyn Monroe type person. Um, yeah, well, everyone was. Well, but, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> but I mean, she just never did it for me. And I'll be honest with you, when I saw My Fair Lady, I was too young. I didn't even know that was Audrey Hepburn. Mm. Um, and now I look back and go, oh, yeah, of course it was. But uh, yeah. I just love that film. It was just a charming movie. Very good. Very good. Uh, but that's good. All right, uh, moving on. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Probably the most iconic movie of all oh, time. Oh, okay. The Sound of Music. I mean, duh. 1965, yeah. Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews I could mean, do nothing wrong Mary at that time. Poppins, man. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. And, I, and I love that one. Mary Poppins was the movie that, that made Disney put them on the map in terms oh, of movies. Big time, yeah. Well, so, she won the Oscar yeah, for Mary that's Poppins. Right. That's right. Uh, the Sound of Music, again, um, look, I will admit I haven't seen it in a long time. Mm-hmm. But it's a beautiful movie. Mm-hmm. And again, it's it's a movie that has some real dramatic and scary elements. I mean, it you've does. got the Nazis yeah. involved in that yeah. movie. A lot of people mm-hmm. kind of forget that who aren't huge fans of it. Right. Um, it, it's got some really intense moments, um, but it, it's just, it's one of those epic, grand, kind of beautiful movies. They don't quite make films like that anymore. And mm-hmm. then she was just so luminous. Uh, her film. her voice yeah. was just so spectacular. It's yeah. kind of one of those voices uh, every once in a, a generation, you know, the Celine Dion's kind of voice where yeah. it's just, just kind of jumps through the screen at you. And she had it all, though, because she didn't just she did. have the voice. She had the voice, the looks. I mean, she yeah. wasn't, like, stunning, she, yeah. but she was very, very attractive, she and was. she could act. She you could know, act. She, was, she could act her butt off. Yeah, she was the so. full package. So, yeah. uh, absolutely, um, th- that film's phenomenal, The Sound of Music. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. A Man for All Seasons, 1966. Uh, six. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I don't remember this film, but I know I watched it. I know I watched it at school. Mm. Like it was an assignment and we had to see it. Have you seen it? I have not seen it. So was it, was it, were you, uh, not liking the teacher that day? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> they forced you to watch it. I don't you know, want to watch this. I have to admit, I actually think I, I watched it at first begrudgingly, yeah. but then got into it. Okay. But I was probably 14, 15 mm. and I haven't revisited it. So I can't really say much. Wow. <laughs> that's funny. Cause that's how all, all quiet on the Western front was for me. Really? Cause I did a class in, in high school. It was called mass media. It was those classes that, uh, people would do because they knew you could an easy A and all it was, was just watching movies the whole semester. That's crazy. So we went decade by decade. So we started with all quiet on the Western front. We moved forward and the last one for the end of the semester test was to watch The Matrix and write a two paragraph essay on how you oh liked it. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, you know, talk to me about being a film critic and stuff like that. Yeah. And to one degree, that sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, one of the reasons why I started this podcast was because I think most critics are just so resentful, mm-hmm. are so nasty and mean and convoluted about how they review films. I almost feel like because they were like forced to watch every single film that came out against probably their own free will in many cases, yeah. they just became resentful. Right. So I that's why on my podcast I specifically say, look, I'm not going to watch everything that comes out. Don't right. rely on me for a review on every movie. I'm going to watch films that appeal to me, you know, and I'm going to tell you what I think is good. But uh, I, I just find that interesting. So yeah, it might sound good in one thing to do a study and watch like a hundred movies, but what if fifty of those movies just aren't really for me? You know, I I I think the viewing 
experience of films should be done, you know, to people's tastes and liking. And I think it's totally okay that there's movies that are for some people and movies that aren't. And it's it's kind of amusing to see how people get at each other's throat about it, you know. But yeah. who cares? It's okay. That's why we make thousands of movies. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And, and obviously, uh, there's been this whole evolution with Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, God. I'm going to do a whole episode on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave no, you no, that. No, 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 no. But, it, but can, it's so please fascinating. Please give your comment on it. It's so fascinating within the business to see this because you kind of have to judge each movie based on what genre it is. Right. And then split the difference between what critics and what the audiences are saying, you know, because they give that score of they try and give you the overall score. So they, oh, this is fresh. It has 90%. Okay. Right. You know, but if you go into it, it could be that the audience could be at 98% and critics are at 60%. That's right. Or, you know, it's very different. Yeah. And and as I said, you know, you have uh, a comedy and if a comedy is at 60%, that's probably going to be a good movie. Right. That's going to be a funny For movie. For a comedy, that's pretty damn good, critics, actually. But with critics, just slam it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I mean, I won't go on a whole tangent on yeah, Rotten Tomatoes. I'll leave that, I'll no, leave no, it's okay. You, so, but you yeah. know what I will comment about yeah, it? Because yeah. a lot of people go, you know, when people bitch and moan about Rotten Tomatoes, a lot mm-hmm. of people will say, "The Rotten, do you know what Rotten Tomatoes is? It's just like a an amalgamation of all the reviews." And I'm like, "Well, yeah, it is on one hand, but on the other hand, it isn't because Rotten, like Rotten Tomatoes, has a show called um, See It or Skip It." I mean, okay. you know, I haven't seen this. Yeah, right. Which drives me crazy. And a lot of people are like, well, all they're doing is they're just putting all everyone's reviews together. Well, no, they're not even giving a film a chance to breathe because they can essentially kill a film before it even comes out by that saying it's total shit. That's correct. That's yeah. my contention about it. Anyway, it's a whole, a whole can podcast. of worms. <laughs> I, 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 it's something yeah. I'm probably going to dedicate a whole like episode to just like find someone who has mm-hmm. the complete different um idea than me mm-hmm. and just go at it you wow, know what i mean and debate explosive podcast yeah. <laughs> all stand right stand back well, for your mics on that one i love that though man a lot of the listeners say they like it when we we get angry at each other i'm like god you guys are so such sadists you know <laughs> oh, sadistic man. bastards like i like the train wreck you know you see something coming but you can't look away <laughs> exactly all right we're gonna keep going here let's okay. see um what's next uh in the heat of the night Okay, so that, that's Sidney Poitier, right? Sydney, right, right. So that's 1968. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that film I saw a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Same. And he, the actor, made an impression on me. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the film, apart from They Call Me Mr. Tibbs. Right. Have you seen it? Uh, I did. Same thing a as long you time in terms ago. of a long time ago. But really what Sidney Poitier is... Um, Claim he fame won the Oscar. Was yeah, he won the Oscar. Was for he the it. first uh, African American male to win an Oscar? I think he was. Male, yes. There was a female. I for think Gone for with the Gone Wind. With his win. Yeah, right, but exactly. that was a supporting actress. That's correct. That is he, correct. I think he was the first African American male actor to win Best Actor Oscar. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but what what made this particular movie so? A zeitgeist so on everybody's mind was because, as far as I remember, this was the first time on screen showing a heavy, um, you know, relationship between uh, a black man and and a white woman. Right, and that was just that was out there. The I mean, we're tension. talking about this is 1967. Yeah, think about so. what was going in our country at that time. Wow, yeah, can you imagine crazy. that? Can you imagine going through that in our time Absolutely. and then have that movie comes out right at the time? Yeah, see, I need to rewatch wow. that film. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. Because if you think about that, if you're in that mindset at that time in 1967 and all that stuff's going on, and then you go see that film and you walk out of that film, yeah, wow, that's impactful, and that wow. must be one of the most controversial things of its time. Oh, it was hugely yeah. controversial. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. so I actually want to revisit that movie mm-hmm. um, for sure. Okay, 1969, Oliver. Uh, yeah, 1968. 1968? Yeah. Okay, it looks like on my list I may have skipped one, So, um, but that's fine. No, Oliver was 19... 19- uh, uh, Oliver was 1968 because Midnight Cowboy was 1969. Okay, good, yeah. So for yeah. some reason I have Midnight Cowboy as 1970, So, oh. but that's no, that's a good thing that we have yeah. your laptop open. Yeah. You're going to help me uh, yeah. put it back in the line. So Oliver, have you seen that? I have not seen that. This is one of the few Are ones around that time period. Me? I have not seen. I'm sorry. Matt, leave oh immediately. No, 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 don't. I mean, Number one, I'm British, and it's a very British movie. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, obviously, it's a classic uh, book. I can't mm-hmm. believe I've gone blank on the author, mm-hmm. Oliver, Oliver, who's it, Charles Dickens? Mm-hmm. That's yeah, great. Okay, thank God. Please, sir, um, may I have some more? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Please, sir, may I have some more? Mm-hmm. That film is fantastic, and it's also quite timeless because they remade that movie as well. I think yeah. Francis Ford Coppola remade it, and it mm-hmm. isn't as good as the original. No. I don't remember who the villain was in the original one, but he terrified me. Mm. As a kid, when I watched it, yeah, um, you need to watch all of that. Okay. that. It's a I'll classic put that at the top movie. Of my list, yeah, yeah, it's actually a musical, but it's a yeah. film that has uh, comedy, music, and mm-hmm. drama, mm-hmm. Uh, and it's quite spooky. Again, I'm saying this from when I was a child watching it. Right. It's been a long time, but it, it's always stayed with me. So, right. Right. a classic film. Okay, let's see. Okay, so Midnight Cowboy. Um, that's 1969. That's right. Dustin Hoffman and John, John Voight. Voight uh, put both of them on the map. Yeah. So um, you've seen it, of course. Right? I have seen that. This is one of the f- ones around that time that's kind of like imprinted on my brain. Right. It was a very, I guess the word is interesting film. That film was very disturbing to it, me. Yes. I've watched it two or three times. Yeah. Um, it's almost two films. I remember the first yeah. half being so twisted and weird. I mean, yeah. he's like a gay prostitute hustler. Yeah. And then Dustin Hoffman is like almost this like gimp guy who becomes his like pimp. And uh, his name is what? Ratso Rizzo? Ritzo Razzo? Something <laughs> so, like that. Uh, yeah. It was That's where, like you know, that, yeah. I'm walking here. I'm walking yeah. here comes from. And then it turns into... This like the well, ultimate... walking here was actually taxi. No, 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 no. That's you're looking at me. You're looking at me. I'm walking here. I'm walking here as Dustin Hoffman from Midnight Cowboy. Was that? Yeah. Well, okay, I, I, thought, I, thought, I also yeah. know this because we just did movie quotes. That was uh, the last okay. Episode. Okay. You're, you're um, right then. Mm. But um, it turns into this bromance, this like beautiful bond and friendship between them, and then the end yes, is does. heartbreaking. Yeah. You know, so it's almost like two different films. It was also the first, I don't know if you know this, it's a fun fact. It was the first X-rated movie yep. to win Best Picture at That's the Oscars. That's right. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was a messed up film. It, Again, yeah. the first half is very like weird and perverse. And then the second half kind of just blooms into something else. I, uh, to be honest with you, this is one of the few movies on the list of Best Pictures I did not like. Oh, so you don't like Midnight Cowboy? No, I did not like it. Well, just, you know just what? because it's the sick, great, twisted, yeah. whatever. Honestly, I, going into it, I didn't expect that. Right. So coming out of it, I was, what did I just watch? See, I kind of knew what yeah. it was about. I knew I mean, it was like an X-rated movie. That probably would have been a very different experience yeah. if I knew it going into it. No, you know what? So. You're right. It, it's not a film I, I look at with admiration. Right. Um, actually, what I admire the most about it, other performances. That's correct. Um, I, okay, I love yeah. Dustin yeah. Hoffman as well. I, I have to that. say that he's one of my favorite yeah. actors. So, yeah. um, but anyway, okay, good. Um, also, this is showing a shift in the Academy where you know the films are a lot darker. They're very much more very mature. real. Yeah. Um, yes. You are Gritty right. is the word. Right at the end of the 1960s. Yeah. Yeah, you'll really see a shift here on the list as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is fun. We're uh, we're like steaming through these, Matt. We're doing pretty mm-hmm. good. All right, let's see. So the next one I have is Patton. Is that correct? Yes. 1970? Yes. Which I've seen many times. Me have as you? well. One of my absolute favorite movies of all time. George C. Scott won the Oscar. Incredibly good in that movie. The, the film is phenomenal as a whole, actually. Yes. It's yeah. such a great war film. Yeah. It's a great film about leadership. Yeah. Um, it, it's quite haunting his performance. Um, I love that movie. It's, yeah, it's fantastic. There, there's a scene in the movie where he's in the jeep and he's uh, talking about almost like in a former life, you know, and uh, leading Roman soldiers and all this kind of stuff. I remember that. And that is one of the uh, few scenes in cinematic history where uh, it just, just the visual of it just right. sticks with me. Yeah, yeah. And then of course the, the image of him behind the enormous right. flag of the United right. States. It's so iconic. Yeah. Um, Patton is a great war movie and it's a bit sad because I think it's gotten a little lost in time. There's mm-hmm. a lot of people of, you know, the current culture, you know, the younger people who have never even heard of that film. That's right. Um, it, it's a phenomenal film. I've actually seen it many times. I am totally with you. Yeah. Highly recommend it. Yep. Okay. So the next one I have is uh, The French Connection, mm-hmm. 1971. That's right. Gene Hackman. Okay. So he won the Oscar. He played right. what? Popeye, Popeye Doyle. 
Um, yeah. I think that was the character's yeah. name. Um, that's a good film. But again, I I remember that film for two reasons. One, his performance. Okay. And two, the insane car chase. I was going to say, I was going to say, it's got one I'm of the wondering most if it, yeah, it's one of iconic the, car chases in that the world. Was, yeah. yeah. And that was the first time they had really done those like long stretch of like one scene. Right. That had never really been done be- right. before that. And that's what made that that uh, just stand out completely with all movies. You know, today you see that so much. Yeah. You know, over and over and over. It's really a copy because of the French Connection. So. You know what else is really interesting? So you look at these films. We were talking about how they took a big shift to be so gritty. And we were talking about the films earlier. Mm-hmm. Lawrence Olivia, mm-hmm. Spencer Tracy, Clark Gable, Gene Kelly. All these like all-American, all-round heroes. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's a such an anti-hero in in the french connection i That's think right. he's an alcoholic he's a druggie yeah. he like sleeps with prostitutes he's mm-hmm. like you know such an anti-hero it's quite interesting well i mean that goes right with the counterculture of you're talking about i mean we're talking about the end of the 60s going into 70s so that whole shift in this whole counterculture within society i mean and that reflects in the films yeah so. i'm really glad i decided to do it this way and kind yeah. of just even though i knew a lot of these films yeah. we wouldn't know about yeah you get the shift, the, the shift. tonal shift of the yeah. movies. Yeah. And you know what? That's probably why as well we don't really gravitate gravitate towards a lot of those earlier films because it's just not our reality. It's a different time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fascinating. Okay, so the, the one I have next then is The Godfather. The Godfather. So that's 1972. That's I've right. never seen it. I'm joking. <laughs> Matt, I was about to your slap jaw you just across the face. Well, number one, I'm Tony the <laughs> movie guy and my logo I, I, is The Godfather. <laughs> Okay, good. Good. <laughs> okay, I've seen The Godfather. Um, as a matter of fact, I keenly remember the first time I watched The Godfather. Mm-hmm. I don't know why my parents let me do this. I think I was about seven years old. Mm-hmm. And I remember that scene with the guy waking up with the horse's head next to him. Wow. It etched itself in my memory. I watched that yeah. movie way too young. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I didn't fully yeah. understand it. I've seen it. You know, look, The Godfather is so long and so yeah, epic. Very long. Yeah. I actually haven't seen it as many times as I, I would want to. I've probably watched it about three or four times. Right. Um, I last watched it again, like in full, really paying attention to it mm-hmm. about four or five years ago. And okay. I mean, that film is, it's one of the best gangster films ever made. The only Absolutely. reason why I won't say it's the best is because to me, good Goodfellas spoke to me in a different way. It's my favorite mobster movie. But that doesn't take away from The Godfather. It, I mean, it's an absolute masterpiece. Honestly, I don't think you'd go wrong with either one. Right. I mean, The yeah. Godfather. You, so you've got Matt Marlon Brando, who won the Oscar again. That was a huge comeback for him as well. Yes, it was. As Don Vito Corleone. Right. And then Al Pacino as uh, Michael Corleone. That's right. And then it had... Um, uh, James Caan. James Caan. You know, Diane Keaton. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Talia Shire. That's right. I mean, so many. And then uh, Robert Duvall. So many incredible yeah. actors um, yeah. that are still working today. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that film is absolutely phenomenal. The Godfather is such a classic. Absolutely. Okay, good. All right. So uh, the next one is one of my favorite films of all time. Uh, one Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, is that 19? That's what well, you Oh, no, no. A sorry. Bit. I skipped yeah, the, a little bit. The Sting is the next Okay, one. The Sting. 1970, Paul Newman, Robert Redford. 1973? Yes, that's right. Okay. So that is... Uh, Paul Newman and Robert Redford. Right. Have well, you seen this thing? I have. And, and to me, it's probably the most, one of the most iconic uh, pairing up of two actors I've ever seen in a movie. Right. Okay. Just so it works so well together. Well, I'm a sucker for Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid through and through. I it's, love it's right there. that movie. Yeah. I've seen that film about five times. I've seen this, uh, the sting once. Right. Um, you know what? Uh, they were charming. Mm hmm. It has like a really twisty and turny storyline. It does. I need yeah. to watch it again because it threw me off. And I, okay. I because of that, I don't remember it so well. Uh, okay. But I know it's considered a classic. No, I love that one. Okay, great. That's a very so good th- movie. The Sting, I mean, yeah. yeah and, and, and I mean, Newman and Redford, apparently, you couldn't get any better in that time. You cannot go wrong. Whenever you put them together, it was gold. Yeah. I mean, Butch yeah. Cassidy and Sundance Kid yeah. is such a, you know, I, I mean, it's an incredible movie it's a western as well but yeah. the buddy kind of bromance type of film it was just phenomenal mm. okay good so let me make sure i'm on track here so what year was that no, that was 1973 okay 1973 was the sting mm-hmm. and then 1974 was the godfather part two is that That's, correct that is correct okay so that is al pacino who has now kind of taken over the the godfather role and then right. robert de niro 
is a young Don Vito Corleone. That's right. They do like the whole flashback. Right. And yeah. Pacino, uh, no, Robert De Niro won an Oscar for that role. Uh, um, yes, I believe that's correct. Yeah, and yeah. that film I know is a, a film where they were both in it together, but they never shared a scene. They never did. Until the uh, Heat, which came yeah. out in the 90s. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. that was so iconic when finally they paired together. That's right. Um, have you seen Godfather Part Two? Oh my God, yes. I've probably seen it more times than God, the first one. Okay, let's talk about that then real yeah. quick, because a lot of people consider it even better than the original. Um, you, you Don't jump over and strangle me. I don't think I've ever seen Part Two from start to finish all the way through. Really? I've seen many scenes. I know it quite well. Okay. I just, I don't know it as well as the first one. And I don't know why I haven't invested the time. I wow. need to. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, for me on the list, it's it, it generally regarded, and I completely agree with it, is that I believe it's one of the few instances where you've ever had in Hollywood a sequel that was better than the original. Right. So on films of sequels that are better than the original, The Godfather this Part is Two is usually top, always number top one. Top and I'm kind of like, well, I don't Absolutely. totally know why. And I, I, I always think like Terminator 2 or yeah. Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. But that's because I haven't really absorbed it. Of course, I know like you broke my heart, Frito. I, you know, I know, yeah. I know it was you. Right. Um, I need to sit down and watch it. Because again, I've yeah. seen parts of it, but I need to watch it in full. Yeah. For, for me, I think what works really with the movie, why it was so much better, at least in my mind, is that it it takes the past and really kind of shows the evolution of how that family came to be what it is. Because in the first one, here's the family. This is what it is. Here's the rules. This right. is the world. Oh, my God. And it became an absolute sensation. Now, where did that family come from? Yeah. And, and you kind of fill in all the gaps. And then you have Michael Corleone at his power. Yeah. You know, the height of it. You know, in the first one, he's finally thrust into it. And now you see okay, this is what he is when he actually is taking on that whole role of, you know, uh, over the entire family. And that, to me, is where he just shines. Yeah, I need to check it out. Honestly, when I was going through the list, I was quite surprised. I was like, oh, wow, Godfather won Best Picture and Godfather Part 2 won Best Picture. That's I was like, right. I guess it really is as acclaimed as everyone It says. really resonated with people. And, you know, it's funny. Um, I wanted to say it was like TNT or something like that. This is a couple of years ago because I've seen them, both of them, multiple times. And TNT did this a marathon and they put it in chronological order. Oh, wow. How does that work? It was actually pretty great. Like it, it taking this, the scenes? And yeah, so so like in the second one, you know how they had all the flashback stuff? It? Yeah. So the flashback stuff, they had it to start. Oh, it wow. Was like, it was almost like a movie in itself. And then you transitioned. And then so you saw the full timeline in consecutive. I wonder consecutive. if Coppola authorized that. He must have, huh? Uh, he had to have, <laughs> you know. But it was a TNT marathon. And they did it that way. And I thought it was actually fantastic. I mean, you know, it actually gave new life to something I had seen so many times. Okay, well, I mean, the Godfather films are absolute classics. Um, absolutely. I, I actually need to invest time, which I'm going to, that will probably be at the top of my list, to just binge all three of them. Because also, I've never even seen the third one. I've heard uh, the third one's not very good. It's not. But I guess I need to watch it to kind of see the culmination. Yeah. Um, but I'm definitely going to catch part two because, yeah. you know, it sounds like it really does deserve all the praise it gets. Do it. Okay, good. I will. All right, so next is then One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. That's is that right. 1975? 1975. So have you seen One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Yes, this okay, is. Thank a, God. It, ooh, Jack Nichols. You've never seen it? Oh, many times. Okay, okay. It, it's in my top 50 yeah. films of all time easily. I don't know. This, this one like scarred me as a kid to see, oh, to see the very film. end scene. And it was just like, you know, because you root, you get really into the character because he is so visceral as an actor and you kind of, you get into it. You have, you have no choice but to get into it. Right. And then that final scene and it Ugh. just rips you out. And yeah. for me, I saw that first time when I was like, I don't know, 10, 11 years old, something like that. I was just devastated. Yeah. So when I was in school, we did the play. And I played, did a play. I played wow. Jack Nicholson's role. Wow. And that's the first time I saw the film. I was probably... 14. Wow. And uh, I have no idea why I was watching that movie and doing that play as a 14 year old, but uh, I was. <laughs> um, I loved it. I saw it a dozen times. Yeah. Uh, but you're totally right. I mean, it etched itself in my brain. Yeah. It is a tough film. Uh, it also really brings to the spotlight like psychiatric abuse. Yes, it does. You know, what these mental institutions with all the, uh, you know, electric. Uh, shock therapy and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and turning them into vegetables basically 
Um, Jack Nicholson is heartbreaking. I think he was one of the first like full body performances that really to me was like, that's acting. Yeah. Like that is acting. I mean, I've always just been a devoted Nicholson fan since then. Obviously, he won the Oscar. Yeah. Uh, an interesting totally fun deserved. fact uh, is a, a young Michael Douglas actually executive produced that film. Is and that he, right? Yeah, and he won an Oscar wow. for, for the film for Best Picture. That was Michael Douglas who no picked idea. up that Oscar. That's amazing. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And oh my God, I don't know the actress's name, but Nurse Ratched. Uh, she won an that, Oscar uh, as well. Louise Fletcher. I think that is, is that, her is that, name. Yeah. Okay. What a bitch. Yeah. But yeah. so well done. No you, you, you know it's a good performance oh. on screen when you actually physically hate them. Oh, my God. Oh, and here's, yeah. here's, here's, here's uh, something else that's really funny. Mm-hmm. A really young Danny DeVito is in that film. Uh, a oh, really yeah. young uh, Christopher Lloyd, Doc from Back to the Future, yeah. is in that film in the mental institution. They're crazy I'm trying patients. to remember that again. Yeah. I'll have to see that again because I can't play that one. Yeah. Um, I So I rewatched it okay. last year. Okay. And actually, it was a long time uh, since I'd seen that. And look, I'll tell you something. It's a little aged. Um, and also yeah, because it's quite, a, again, it's quite a heavy film. It's all performance. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Nicholson is amazing. The, the the scene, I mean, obviously there's plenty of scenes, but one scene that always stays with me, which to me is a masterclass in acting, mm-hmm. is when she cuts off the TV so they can't watch it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they're trying to watch a game, a football game, mm-hmm. um, and everyone's kind of depressed. So then he creates the game in his head. The TV's off and he gets everyone involved and he... They're all watching TV and everyone gets excited and elated. And he puts, do you remember that scene? You, you put a smile on my face. Just, uh, just you know, you you recounting this. It's yeah. incredible. I, anyway, yeah. that film, I, I can't say enough about. Right. Uh, it, it's not a feel good movie. It, at it's all. not. It's honestly not something I can watch again. Right. Because it's, it ripped me out. Yeah. So at the end. It's just a so. masterclass in um, performance, I think, that Agreed. really and storytelling. Yeah, uh, yeah. but it's incredible. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on. <laughs> Hopefully, we've and also this is something going through this list that mm-hmm. proves a point that I've brought up many times, which is the Academy need to freaking lighten up. <laughs> so many of their movies are depressing, heavy movies. That's just that's what they gravitate towards. I've been saying that for years. Yeah, I, I actually have a theory. I've been saying for years uh, with my experience in the business that if you want to win an Oscar, you have to play someone who is uh, uh, severely depressed or severely uh, you know, injured, mentally handicapped, challenged, mentally challenged, dead. Physically. <laughs> right, exactly. It's got to be something that is so far out there. It can't be just like you played the the best possible uh bad guy you know whatever it's got to be it's got to be something that's so far out there and crazy and messed up and i don't know if that's so true because i don't know if that's saying something of our day and age but a lot of the films that we've never heard of from decades ago mm-hmm. seem like they were much lighter fare that's right i agree <laughs> anyway it's so fascinating yeah. isn't it mm-hmm. okay let's see let's uh, keep going here so uh next i have i think 1960 76 yeah. is that right yeah. rocky Rocky classic. Adrian! So, I mean, that's, I did. that's an yeah. amazing movie. Oh, amazing um, movie. Look, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I've seen the first one many, many times. Mm-hmm. I, I love the others even more. Like, you know, the one. I'm still a fan. You know my favorite one? Rocky IV. Rocky IV. Yeah, yes. me too, man. He goes up Drago. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If oh, we course. can get along, then you can get along. <laughs> then we can all get along. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Rocky single-handedly like, ends the Cold War. Done. <laughs> done. That's all we needed. It's so funny. I love that one too. I love the one with Mr. T. I think mm-hmm. that's Rocky three. Uh, three. That's three. Yeah. Yeah. Because two is where he comes back and fights uh, Apollo him again. Creed. Creed. Yeah. Three is where it's Mr. T. Four is Drago, and then yeah. five is just an abomination. I don't want to talk about. But the street fight is cool. Uh, I think the street fight is cool, but the I movie is. We're bad. gonna differ on that. Yeah. I thought the whole, I didn't like anything. Not even the, the street fight. I was fight? such a huge fan yeah. of the entire series. But then he brings it back with right. Rocky, uh, Rocky Balboa. Yeah, and then Creed. And that was. Creed was very Creed, good, right? and now they're going to do good. a Creed two. Yeah, apparently, I guess he's going to be fighting Drago well, or Ivan Drago's, Drago's son. son. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, they couldn't think of any more new ideas. Yeah, so, so. It, it's funny. I'm glad we agree on that because um, I mean, obviously, Rocky started it all, yeah. and, and a lot of people don't know that Sylvester Stallone he wrote that film. You know, yes. he got a nomination as Best Actor, and yeah. it won Best Picture. Yeah. Um. I mean, it was it that film was a sensation, 
um, I like the first movie, mm -hmm. but I'm actually a fan of the franchise more than the original film because you're right. It's the cheesier quote unquote one. I mean, Rocky Four is so cheesy 80s. It's so cheesy. It's glorious. It's everything about the 80s. It's glorious. The, the it's... robot nanny. The and then the, <laughs> oh my god! And then the whole scene where he's in Russia training and he's out there like a lumberjack with like you know no tools, yes. no equipment, just yes. like using like Mother Nature Heart and trees. Yeah, that's yeah. the song. Yes. And then Ivan Drago's like doing it with all these machines and modern equipment. 15,000 pounds, <laughs> 20,000 pounds. Oh my God. Got a needle. Now it's 50,000 pounds. All right. Now I really like you, Matt. Uh, anyway, yeah. I love that movie. And also here's another reason why yeah. Rocky Four yeah, mm -hmm. always will hold a dear place in my heart. This is how old I am. I saw it in the theater. Yeah. You know, so Same. I mean, that was an incredible experience. Obviously, I was way too young to see the original one in the theater. Uh, yeah, I was born. Yeah, <laughs> I think I was uh, about to be 1976. 1976. I was born in 1977. Oh, <laughs> All right, okay. let's see. Okay, good. So we'll keep going here. Yeah. Annie Hall. Annie is Hall. Is that 1977? That is correct. Woody okay. Allen. Diane have you King. seen it? I have. Uh, Are I you saw a fan? Like half of it. Uh, I'm not. I'm not, just I'm not so a know. huge Woody Allen fan to begin with. There's there's a couple of Woody Me Allen either. fans. I have a great. Uh, what's it? Uh, uh, Night in Paris or whatever. Midnight it is. in Paris, Midnight Paris is the one and only Woody Allen film I love. Okay, with I love Owen that movie Wilson. As well. So I think yeah. we're totally on the same page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and Annie Hall is acclaimed. People love it. It's considered one of his best films. It yeah. won Best Picture. Yeah, it's a charming film. It's, it's quirky. But I think it's know. charming because of Diane Keaton's performance. Totally which she agree. won the Oscar. Totally for. agree. If Diane Keaton is not in that, it never goes close to being a, a yeah. Winner. And something I've said is, number one, I mean, Woody Allen's made about 40 movies. Yeah. I think I've seen about six of his films. Yeah. And Midnight in Paris is the only one I really like. Mm -hmm. Number two, I actually can't stand him. And I'm not even talking about his personal life, I which sounds agree. really controversial. Yeah. Yeah. I hate how jittery and quibbly and quirky and all like weird his mannerisms are. It drives me crazy. I'm actually fine with he has like a personal policy where he doesn't go to any award ceremony. So he doesn't actually accept an award if he right. wins an award. I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. I am right there with you. Yeah. He doesn't jump off the screen to me at all. I great writer, like it's quirky. It's it's got a very specific vibe and feel to it that nobody else has. Yeah. So he has that going for him. But I completely agree. Midnight in Paris is the one that I did like. Yeah. So I mean, people have to check that film out because it's yeah. just Love fantastic. That. Love that. Owen Wilson's great in it. My favorite you know? movie with Owen Wilson. Yeah, it's a great film. So. Um, you know, people should check out Annie Hall, I think, mm -hmm. for Diane Keaton's Oscar winning performance. Completely agree. Um, I don't really think it's the best picture winner, but whatever. Yeah. Okay, good. So next I think is uh nineteen seventy eight. The Deer The Hunter. Deer Hunter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again I'm bragging. I, I saw it this year. A couple Did you months really? ago. Okay. That film, have you seen it? I haven't seen it. I've I've heard so many good things about it, and it's haunting. I, I mean, it's De Niro. It's, it's walking. Good, it's... But... So it's directed, I think, by Michael Cimino. Is that correct? Uh, um, I'm not sure. I haven't seen a lot of his other stuff. The film is about four hours long. The first hour and a half of that movie mm -hmm. is a wedding. It's just a wedding, and it just sets up the characters. You've got Christopher Walken, who won the Oscar. Mm -hmm. You've got a Meryl Streep, who is gorgeous in this film. It's one of her first roles. She got nominated, mm -hmm. and De Niro, who got nominated. Right. And then the film is very notorious for taking such an immediate tonal shift. Hmm. What happens is they're at a wedding. So the first hour and a half, actually, I think it's the first two hours is just this wedding. How did and you watch it that long? I, I, it, a it wedding just, it, it enthralled you that much? It fascinated me because it builds and builds the characters. Wow. But basically, sure. it's this wedding mm -hmm. that they're at just before they're getting drafted to Vietnam War. Okay. And then the film doesn't like transition. It or the next frame, frame is just isn't just them in in vietnam war it's literally them like under fire napalm death destruction dead bodies and you know next thing you know they're in a pow camp it was so like such a tonal shift it was like what the fuck is going on wow um but the film is really notorious for the russian roulette scenes um russian oh. roulette you know with the gun where yeah, you yeah. load it with oh, a bullet yeah. and yeah christopher walken i mean he won an oscar for it walken. i mean the scene you, have you seen the film? I haven't. I have not seen it. This is one of the few ones, you know, in modern age, which I have not seen. Do you, are you going to see it? I'll see it. I'll okay, see so it. So then but, I'm going to, I'm not going to spoil anything. No, but the... still, <laughs> in two hours of watching a wedding, I don't know. It's, it's not really making me jazzed up to see it. Um, It's worth it because I remember when I was watching this film, I was like, 
man, they, they don't make films like this anymore. Like you could tell, you could, the, the director's confidence just exuded off the screen. Like he just didn't give a it shit. It would have to be to, right. to be able to have the, the balls to, to make that, that absolute shift. Right. And you could, like, he was basically just like, sit down, enjoy the ride or don't. Uh, but you're in it as as long as I want you to be in it. And that's kind of, I, it did surprise me how long the setup was. But again, um, it worked. I mean, I watched the entire thing. It's a very gripping film. It's a very heavy film. It, You know, I think it's worth it because it's a film you're not necessarily going to go back and want to rewatch. Because uh, okay. it's very heavy. Right. Um, but I do, it did have quite an effect on me. And I remember, I remember thinking specifically, wow, they just don't make movies like this anymore. Huh. Um, so I think it was worthy of the best picture, and I, I would definitely re- recommend The Deer Hunter. Yeah, it's, it's always, that's also one of the ones right at the top of the list in terms of, you know, top rated of all time in terms of winners. It's quite something. It's yeah. kind of one of a kind. Okay. Um, okay, good. Next, I think, is what, 1979? Mm-hmm. Kramer vs. Kramer. That's correct. Have you seen that? I have seen that one. So Meryl Streep won yeah. the Oscar. Mm-hmm. Dustin Hoffman won the Oscar. That's right. Best actress, best actor. That's right. Um, I liked that film. Mm-hmm. To me, I think that film succeeded on performance. I completely um, I agree. don't know if it deserves Best Picture, actually, because the film, other than those incredible performances, isn't that memorable to yeah. me. I don't know if you disagree. Certainly, certainly not screenwriting. Right. <laughs> uh, I completely agree with you on that. I mean, me as a screenwriter, it's it's okay. It's, yeah. it's decent. It's solid and everything. But I completely agree. It's uh, the, the courtroom stuff, the drama between the, the two parents and with the child and everything like that. The performance, absolutely. The performance is what excels. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, so I'll, I'll move on from that. We're, we're doing good. We're getting up there. Okay, good. So next is what? 1980 Ordinary People. Have you seen that? I have not seen that. Okay, I have. Um, and? Robert Redford directed it. Um, I remember okay. that. And I remember the lady that got an Oscar nomination who plays the mother. It was a very unusual role for her. Mary Tyler Moore That's from the Mary right. Tyler Moore show. That's right. She was such a bitch in that film. Mm. Um, I actually didn't know her as Mary Tyler Moore show because mm. I'm British. So I didn't know that. Um, and Donald Sutherland plays the the husband. He is fantastic in that movie. I, I know a lot of uh, critics consider that he was really snubbed. Uh, for, for the I, best well i think he didn't even get nominated but oh, he's wow. fantastic and then timothy so timothy yeah. hutton won the best actor and i think he was one of the youngest actors to mm. win the best actor okay um again that film to me i think excels on performance i don't find it an infinitely rewatchable movie maybe right. i need to check it out again the performances were quite good it's it's a very uh in-depth family drama you know, that's mm-hmm. really what that film is. Um, I'm but, saying it, it's funny that we were talking about all these trends in terms of, uh, you know, things changing and everything like that. The last four years, we're talking about Annie Hall, Deer Hunter, Kramer vs. Kramer, Ordinary People. Very similar. Yeah. The performances. That's right. Not necessarily great movies. The performances, performances. is really what stand out to me. Right. I, uh, it's totally true. Yeah. Okay, good. Let's see what else. Um, okay, so 1981, Chariots of Fire. Chariots of Fire. This is so ridiculous. I saw it this year. Really? Um, okay, I know Chariots of Fire for the Vangelis. Which is kind of funny because when you actually watch the scene where they're doing it, almost doesn't. It almost seems out of place. Right. But the song is so iconic. You know? So, have you seen Chariots of Fire? Yes, uh, okay. it was many years ago. Because so I don't remember every detail. I just watched it mm-hmm. a few months ago. Mm-hmm. I put it on with trepidation, thinking it was going to be very boring and yeah. very snooty mm-hmm. i absolutely loved this movie there you go i was transfixed i i it blew me away matt it was really weird wow um the film is is very well directed beautiful the the music the cinematography but the performances are, are incredible you had this um the, the the real life actor who played him died in real life he was an openly gay actor in the 80s mm-hmm. he was a very close friend of ian mckellen mm-hmm. and he died very young i don't know i think his name no his name was ian charleston so he okay. plays one of the main leads who's a right. scottish guy who's a, a very religious person mm-hmm. and he was one of like the fastest men in the world and then there was this other british guy who basically was competing against him and, right. and he was just trying to be better than him but yeah. he couldn't yeah. um Anyway, it just tells the story of, you know, it's about uh, 
marathon racing, you know, the fastest man in the world. It was such a sumptuous and absorbing film. I I don't even know why it touched me that, you know, again, I I remember the music. Was it the music? Let's no, be honest. It, was, it was everything. No. That's what blew me away because I think I watched the film when I was very young as well. And mm-hmm. it didn't really, I always remember the music, but it didn't stay with me. But have you ever sat down and watched a movie thinking like, mm, and then before you know it, you're like engrossed. Absolutely. You're like Absolutely. all in. That's what That's I usually want to take my expectation and just put it really <laughs> low. <laughs> but it really yeah. surprised me. Yeah. So um, I actually can't recommend Chariots of Fire even more. I, I actually want to buy it on like Blu-ray and watch it again. Uh, it's a phenomenal movie. Uh, I think it's very deserving of the best picture. Agreed. So that's uh, Chariots of Fire. Okay. Oh, this is so funny. So next is Gandhi. Mm-hmm. 1982. 1982. I watched it two, 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 two weeks ago. Did you really? Yeah. Wow, Isn't so that's this crazy? Fresh. That's fresh. I, I've seen like a dozen of these films in uh-huh. the last few months. Well, I told you I'm crazy as Tony the Movie Guy. Mm-hmm. I, I watch like a movie every day and wow. I've been trying to Dedication. catch up on the classics. Yeah. Um, Gandhi blew me away. Again, it's over. It's like three and a so half hours long. Epic. Such ben an epic movie. Kingsley's performance it destroys it. You've seen so you've seen. I it, have seen it. I have definitely seen this one. Not yeah. only is it such an important, vital film, mm-hmm. like as a biography and for mm-hmm. cultural history, but I mean, he's like twenty-five or six, something along those lines. Um, yeah, and he plays the role from that age all the way to like his death. Yes, he does. It's insane. It's crazy. Here's a funny fact. Ian Charleston, the guy I was just giving all those kudos to from Chariots of Fire, is in Gandhi as well. And he's the religious guy that uh, prompts him to go to India. Oh. Um, he's in that film. Interesting. Uh, which I only noticed because I, t- I totally had, forgot that. Yeah, because yeah. I had seen Chariots of Fire. Um, Martin Sheen's in Gandhi as mm-hmm. well. Um, I-, I loved it. It was it was such a phenomenal and such an important movie. Yeah, I actually... I to this day I cannot see Ben Kingsley in any other role. Like really, like that right. was even though that was so long ago, he's he is forever Gandhi to me. Well, you want to have a trip? Watch Gandhi and then watch Sexy Beast. Have you ever <laughs> seen that? It is such a good performance of his. He plays like a um, Cockney British gangster. That's right. Who is so arrogant and such a fucking twat um but it's such a great performance try and watch go, those with your british words here <laughs> uh, it just means an idiot yeah, try no, and watch those two movies together it's wow. so weird that is totally opposite ends of the spectrum yeah anyway gandhi is phenomenal but but that speaks to how well how great of an actor he yeah is. he's he's phenomenal yeah. absolutely and then i mean well actually there's another film we're going to mention with him in later anyway so yeah. We'll keep going. Okay. All right. So 1983, Terms of Endearment. Exactly. Have you seen that? I have seen that. I have tried to watch it yeah. several times. Can't and I'm it. going to admit that I, I haven't gotten through it. I don't know why. It's got Jack Nicholson with another mm-hmm. Oscar winning performance. Mm-hmm. I think Shirley MacLaine's in I it. Mean, there's a lot. There's Debbie Winger, Shirley, which she was hot at Deborah that time. Winger, Jeff at Daniels. At that time, she was, she was you know, top of uh, her game. Shirley MacLaine, Jack Nicholson, Danny DeVito. Oh, my God. You know, the list goes on and on. It was a a crazy cast. Yeah, so it's supposed to, and it was a huge hit, huge film, a big, like, family drama. Yeah. So you've seen it? You liked it? I've seen it. No, it was not my, my favorite film. You know? Yeah, so I I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I've tried to watch it a few mm-hmm. times. It didn't. Here's what I usually do: yeah. if it's a movie, I'll watch ten minutes, kind of like the script. You read ten pages, right. and if it doesn't catch my attention, then I kind of get lose interest. Yeah. On a TV show, mm-hmm. I found that you have to give it more than you have ten minutes. To. Sometimes you have a to give it more than A lot of times, a pilot episode, episode. And a TV show is yeah. not that good. Right, like Game of Thrones it took me the whole first season to get into it. Heck, uh, with with Game of Thrones, they actually messed it up so bad they almost got fired. Right, that's crazy. They had huh? to reshoot almost half of the entire pilot episode. They had somebody come in and fix yeah. their mistakes because they just it was so bad. HBO was about to fire. That's crazy. So, so. I find sometimes you have to revisit a movie mm-hmm. several times. In terms of endearment, is one that's always been on my radar yeah. because I've tried a few times. It didn't really grab my attention. No, I gave up I, on it. I know it's so acclaimed. I love Nicholson and it's an Oscar winning performance. So I have to catch it again and see if I can get through it. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. Um, 
Let's see. Okay, Amadeus. This is Amadeus. 1984. Yes. It's another one that I watched as a child, mm -hmm. and I remember liking it, yeah. but I don't remember it because I was so young. Yeah. Tom Hulse was in it, mm -hmm. who's an actor that he was in like Animal House, and then Amadeus, and then has kind of vanished. Yeah, I true. think uh, Milo yeah, Milos Forman, who's a very acclaimed director, mm -hmm. um, directed it. Um, have you seen Amadeus? I have. Do you and remember it? I do remember it very vividly. I actually loved this movie. Mm. Uh, this is, you know, I don't know. I think it was probably in my teenager years. And uh, I loved it, but it definitely affected me. It was almost, almost kind of weird going through school bullies and you go through all that kind of stuff. And to see it on the screen, it was actually so real to me what he was going through and the treachery behind his back, which eventually essentially killed him. Right. So you know? F. Murray Abraham yeah. won the Oscar, yeah. which is one of the reasons why I really want to watch this movie, because not only is it obviously the, the story of Amadeus, mm -hmm. but apparently it's one of the best in like impersonifications or whatever the word is of just a, yeah. yeah, of a, a total villain. Like total. the guy is so but it was su sneaky. Yeah, he suppresses so him behind his back. Yeah, yeah. it's not your typical villain, him. like in your face, I'm your I'm your enemy. It's yeah. this little you know, in the That's background, little, little little stab in the back, little little pain pricks, little back. pain pricks, and eventually kill him. That's incredible, yeah. yeah. So, um, I it's that's been like on the top of my list of yeah. uh, a film I want to revisit. You should and really pay attention to. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to do that. Yeah. And the funny thing is, I remember a couple months ago I actually rented it and I started watching it, and then my wife came home and it's like four hours long. She was yeah. like, "Uh, -uh no. nope." <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit, <laughs> just lost four bucks." Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely going to do it. Okay, good. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, 1985, Five. Out of Africa. Yes. So that was Meryl Streep, Robert Redford. That's right. This is a film that, to me, because I remember watching it, mm -hmm. I think that's a film that's totally forgettable. Uh, do you remember I, I, it? The only thing I remember is the epic vistas. The, the, the cinematography was just so out there, and it was just beautiful okay that's what i remember yeah everything else i don't because i love streep um yeah. i like redford yeah. um and i actually remember watching that movie again yeah. i was probably too young to understand it yeah i just to me i think it's a film that's being forgotten um but who knows maybe there's people who love it so i don't i'm wanna... sure there are people out there yeah you can get some hate mail yeah i don't want to offend you guys each to their own <laughs> all right let's see um okay so 1986 mm -hmm. platoon Charlie Sheen. You've seen Platoon, right? Tom Berenger, yeah. So Oliver Stone won the Oscar. He directed it, uh, yeah. Best Picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Willem Dafoe was incredible. Obviously, he's the iconic shot of oh, him like with his arms sprawled in the air. That scene yeah. is still, it still so, works. It's incredible. That, that movie is definitely one of the ones that, that stands the test of time. You could watch it today and it'll still affect you the same that it affected you in 1986 watching it. And, and I will agree with you somewhat. Mm -hmm. I was, but I watched it again last year. And it didn't? I don't get me wrong. I love Platoon. Yeah. But here's what I will tell you. Platoon used to be my favorite war movie of all time. Really? For um, most of my life. Okay. And when I rewatched it last year, I was like, it's still amazing. There are scenes that are incredible. Willem Dafoe is incredible. Tom Berenger, he's such an asshole yes he is a, a young johnny depp i mean there's mm -hmm. so many actors john c mcginley's in mm -hmm. this um and then of course charlie sheen who's actually very good in this film he was good he was the, solid yeah the music uh mm -hmm. you know just the, the drama it, it's it's a very impacting film for some reason it did feel a little aged and dated to did me did you really okay i still thoroughly enjoyed it um, but when I compare it to something like Saving Private Ryan, to well, me that's like a pitch perfect. Movie. Well, that's just because that took it. Yeah. That took over the mantle of it. Right. You mean like to a whole new after, level. after that point? Like, how, how do you up that? Right. But before I had rewatched it, right. I remember I was making a list of my favorite war movies. It yeah. was number one because for most of my life. Because again, I watched Platoon when I was way too young. Right. So it had such an impact on me. So up until my thirties, Platoon was like my favorite war movie. Um, but then when I rewatched it and then I rewatched Saving Private Ryan and I was like, OK, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it's always going to be in my top five or top ten. It, it's right. an incredible movie. It was Oliver Stone at his best. So, yes. I mean, Platoon was incredible. And also a, a film that gritty. 
that violent to was, win Best Picture was apparently quite groundbreaking at the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're talking about a little bit of throwback to like maybe 1967 with uh, Midnight Cowboys, something like yeah. that, very gritty, yeah. but in a different sense. But yeah, yeah, it was definitely out of the ordinary at that time because the 80s were all big and grand and, you know, that sort of thing, over top. And I have that film to thank for getting into like Motown. Like, mm. I, I became a huge fan of Smokey Robinson because of really? because of that film. Yeah, That's remember funny. he's got Tears of a Clown. Yeah. And, na, 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 na. Anyway, I can't sing. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I, the soundtrack was incredible. All right, let's keep going. We're, uh, we're on the home stretch. Okay, so next is 1987, The Lost Emperor. That's right. I don't remember this movie at all. I remember. I saw it as a kid. Um, I liked it just because it spoke to me because I was about that age of the kid. But it's, that's about um, it. Martin Scorsese? Um, I think so. Yeah, I believe that's correct. You know, but there was there was no. I mean, there was Peter O'Toole, but really the main character was the young kid, right? And, and I he's think, like an Asian emperor or something. Well, yeah, it's 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 an emperor of uh, of uh, uh, you know. Hence the title. <laughs> yeah, hence the title. Exactly, the last emperor. But uh, it's a well done film. But I don't believe that it te- uh, stands the test of time at all. Right. Yeah. I, I I could watch it today, and I probably would not like it. Right. I totally forgot about it until yeah. I was going through the list. Yeah. Okay. So the next film, 1988, is one of my favorite films yeah. of all time. One Rain Man. Believe uh, it or not, this. Okay. So tell now me. I have tell one me. that I watched this year. W- w- which one? I saw Rain Man? Rain Man this year for the first time. I had never seen it until this year. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So what was your reaction watching it the first time? <sighs> You know, it was pretty incredible because it was actually a side of Tom Cruise's acting, which I had never seen before. Right. It took a whole nother level in terms of my appreciation of his acting. I mean, obviously, Dustin Hoffman was just like unreal as right. that character. But for anybody to be able to hold hold their own in the scenes while he, Dustin Hoffman is doing his thing incredible I, yeah so yeah. i'm glad you said that okay yeah. so rain man is again it's a film i saw very young i yeah. saw it when it came out i mean yeah. it's a, a just a beautiful film i think it's by barry levinson at one best picture yeah. and dustin hoffman has the juicy meaty role that got yes. all the acclaim that's right and accolades he won the best actor right. and he deserved it he yeah. plays raymond uh what's the thing he has it's um, um it was a autistic kind of thing and, right you know he's very very smart with especially with numbers and remembering things but and stuff like that with social skills nothing right so uh, dustin hoffman was phenomenal he absolutely deserved the um yeah. oscar nomination i'm really glad you said what you've said because i've watched this movie 20 times mm-hmm. tom cruise is phenomenal in that film he is actually yes. the emotional anchor of that film and, i completely agree and here's um w- what's really cool to see um many critics who have gone back and assessed that film they still say dustin hoffman was incredible but uh, they really appreciate tom cruise's role now that it, it really was oscar worthy like he was as good, if not better. I completely um, agree. It's such a beautiful film. Yeah. It's so well done. It, yeah, the whole relationship, everything you know that they do, uh, playing off each other and all the different scenes, it, it does. It never feels strained. Yeah, and and that could have easily gone that direction with how out there the acting had to be for Dustin Hoffman. Right. So I- any other actor, I think, other than Tom Cruise in that particular role, he didn't. Uh, you know, Dustin Hoffman doesn't win for. For best, I agree best completely, yeah. Which is um, kind of funny because you think about it, uh, you know, Tom Cruise's entire career, in that particular one, he was the one servicing and making sure that, uh, you know, Dustin Hoffman, you know, whatever. And right. that's what really, I feel like, kind of kicked off his career. If you notice Tom Cruise's career, he keeps launching other people's careers. Oh, so it, many it's like, times. You know, there's so many times. Jamie Foxx, yeah, Ken Watanabe. And he hasn't, he hasn't won Hoffman. an Oscar, yeah. you know, and but all these different times where... He did such a great performance, and somebody else won an Oscar. But if it was any other actor, that person doesn't win an Oscar. Yeah, I agree. And I'm a huge Tom Cruise fan. And yeah. something that always uh, pisses me off is, you know, and I kind of get why he's doing it now because he's yeah. kind of pushing on in the years. But, yeah. you know, so many of the you know young, quote-unquote, people I talk to go, oh, Tom Cruise, the action star. I'm like, dude, yeah. 
Go back and watch. So good. Yeah, go watch Born Rain on the Man. Of July. Born on the Fourth of July. Magnolia. Magnolia. The guy can yes. act. You know, even um, Vanilla Sky. Yeah, which I really like. I, I think that film was totally underappreciated. I thought it was great. Well, even his uh, his new one. Have you seen the new one? Oh yeah, American uh, Made. American Made. Fantastic. Made. It was finally. I was yeah. actually. I was. I was happy to see him actually go back to do a something role like a that. little bit more we'll with see. more meat. Maybe yeah. he goes back to doing something like Magnolia. That would be fantastic. Well, you heard the rumor, right? I mean, we're on a tangent, but the rumor is that. Um, uh, Quentin Tarantino's last film about the Charles Manson uh, murders. Mm -hmm. He wants Tom Cruise. No, he's on the top of the list. And look, if there's anyone, if there's anyone who could bring out a performance out of Tom Cruise that that would would really shock people, it would be someone like Quentin Tarantino. I mean, you know, with with his role with Magnolia, that uh, the entire role. Uh, was a little bit different. Was right. a very different description. The, his big monologue that really won him the Oscar and everything like that. He I didn't feel. win. He got nominated. Right. He well, should have well, won. Yeah, Golden Globe. He won because Golden he Globe. did. Yeah, biggest snub I think of Oscar I, history. I completely agree. So the only reason why he got that is because um, that whole monologue. He actually did his own production at his own house. Got all the studio lights. Did it on stage. Everything like exactly like you would see it in the film. And did his ho- whole monologue Respect himself. The cock. <laughs> exactly. That was him. That yeah. was not the script. I know it's crazy. So, and he sent that to them, saying, "Look, hey, this is my idea." And they went, "Yes." Look, he's a total professional. And total that's, professional. That's why, I to agree. me, he's one of the classic uh, remaining movie stars. And I, I'm always entertained with Tom Cruise. I mean, he Agreed. really is fantastic. Agreed. Um, and he deserves all the accolades. Rain Man is number one. It's just a fantastic film. Mm-hmm. Dustin Hoffman is incredible in it. But so is Tom Cruise. So yeah. definitely, if anyone uh, listening hasn't seen Rain Man, yeah. that film is phenomenal. Yeah. Stands the test of time. I'd actually like to see uh, Tom do some more uh, bad guy roles. Like oh, collateral. yeah. Collateral. Yeah. Anyways, we're yeah. going on a tangent. Moving on. <laughs> All right, good. So 1989, Driving Miss Daisy. That's right. So, I mean, I think this film, I don't think it deserves best picture. Have you seen it? I have seen it. Do you want it. to defend it? <laughs> Um, I, you know, I it, would completely agree with that. It's totally forgettable to me. I think I saw it once when yeah. it came out. Morgan it's, it's Freeman. It's endearing. Right? Is it's it endear- <laughs> Well, I felt it was endearing. I, I thought their relationship was actually, uh, to me, okay. impacted me in that way. But I don't feel it was best picture winning endearing. Right. Like, and the lady like, who played Miss Daisy, I think, won the Oscar and then yeah. died because <laughs> she was like in her 80s or yeah. 90s. That's right. That's right. Um, I. I don't remember it at all. Yeah. Um, well, before this picture, Morgan Freeman was basically a nobody. Really? For the most part. Like, the, I wouldn't say it completely launched his career, but it definitely put him like another level. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So it's one of those films I've been kind of like, should I watch it? But I really don't have much interest. So yeah. it will be at the bottom of my like 2C list. Mm. All right. Moving on. Um, okay. Dances with Wolves. So this is 1990. That's right. Kevin Costner. I saw Dances with Wolves in the theater when it came out. And mm. I'm going to tell you something. Dances with Wolves is a good movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin Costner, he directed it too. That's he right. stars in it. Mm-hmm. It's like this epic kind of border cowboy type movie. Yeah. It's really long. Yep. It's actually quite good about any, how he befriends the Indians. Um, here's my pet peeve with Dances with Wolves. Number one, mm-hmm. it's way too long. I would agree with you. Number yeah. two, Goodfellas should have won Best Picture. And just so you know, most yeah. critics still go crazy over that that's my big peeve yeah. with dances with wolves because it's not a bad movie i think it's a a really good film but it gets such a bad rap if you google it it's yeah. like fucking good fellow should have won. won and to me yeah. i i am sorry i totally agree because like the departed when scorsese won the oscar for that film finally okay it was a fun film it wasn't his best at all it wasn't to me they were, I mean, they were given that because it was martin scorsese it, it was it was so over you know, what's yeah. the word? It was a long tra- time due, you know, yeah. the aviator so Leonardo was better. DiCaprio kind of thing. Well, finally, okay, exactly. we'll, we'll give you one. The yeah, Revenant I mean, was good. No, he, he deserved so that. many performances but before that there that was, were better. That's why he really won that one. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so Dances with Wolves, I think, gets a bad rap. It's actually an epic film. It's really it's well very, done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry. I'll always be biased because Goodfellas should have won. Yeah. For, for me, Dances with Wolves, the first time I saw it, I did see it in the movie theaters and I was young. So for me, it's the first, uh, I guess you could say, recollection I can uh, memory where I remember it being long. Right. I remember being in the theater and going, my God, this is long. But I was still kind of absorbed, but it was a bit too. Yeah. It, yeah. it took me years later to see it again, to appreciate it and go, okay, I, I get it. Yeah. So 
Anyway, um, I'll move on from that. It, again, it, it's actually a decent film. It gets mm-hmm. a bad rap. Yep. Uh, the next one is one of the best movies of all time. Absolutely. 1991, The Silence of the Lambs. Jodie Foster, Anthony Hopkins. They both won the Oscars again. Yeah. Um, oh, this film is the, so good. Uh, Anthony Hopkins, his uh, uh, performance was amazing. You know how, how long he's in the movie for? Yes, that's the that's a, like 17 minutes. Yeah, and it was, so it was the, it was the smallest something. amount of screen time ever for an Oscar win. And it doesn't feel that way. No, it doesn't. That's what's incredible. No, it doesn't. I've seen this you film feel so his many presence times. The entire film. Oh, the entire time, and when he's yeah. on screen, yeah. you are just magnetized. No. Mm-hmm. And also, he's like, I mean, he's a cannibal, psychopathic serial killer, Plays it and you very well. are rooting for that guy <laughs> in a Oddly, twisted yes, way. Yes, exactly. Um, and Jodie Foster is phenomenal. Right. And I always say this: uh, Ted Dem, who plays Buffalo Bill. Yeah doesn't get enough kudos because obviously he was Agreed. overshadowed yeah, just, by Anthony you know, Hopkins yeah. as Buffalo Bill. He was terrified. Yeah. Was so yeah. weird. They he's go like, to his house and he's got all the, you know, was skin. Was a great and, big fat person? You know, uh, puts his junk between his legs and uh, does a whole thing. And, the, and the famous line, he puts a, pushes I'd the lotion on the skin yeah. or oh, yeah. puts a hose again. I mean, that's uh, such a messed up line, and yet that's one of the most iconic in film history. The film is incredible. I've yeah. seen it so many times. Yeah. Um, one thing I love doing mm-hmm. is uh, making my wife or a friend watch a classic film like that for mm-hmm. the first time. So uh, Miss Money Yenny, Yenny, my good friend who co-hosts the show w- with me, mm-hmm. watched it for the first time with me about two months ago. Wow. And she absolutely she, loved it she loved it yeah okay. and i love seeing the reactions and stuff yeah. uh that film <laughs> did you did you look out of her you know go like <laughs> as she's watching it to uh to see you know whenever whenever he opens up the door oh my god yeah <laughs> i was more entertained looking at watching her yeah. reactions in her, the film. her mouth you know hitting the floor Silence of the Lambs is a timeless classic. Very, and it, yeah. Again, it's also a film that kind of transcends its genre because mm-hmm. it's a very heavy film, but it's just so well done. Yeah. It yeah. deserves all the accolades it got. Agreed. And that also really made me pay attention to Jodie Foster as well, who yeah. I've, I've really liked. Okay. All right, let's see. Uh, 1992, Unforgiven, Clint Unforgiven. Eastwood. Have you seen that? I have. It's also Morgan Freeman. That's Gene right. Hackman is a really good bad guy. Yep. I watched that film when it came out. It mm-hmm. wasn't so memorable to me. Mm-hmm. I watched it again a few years ago, and I really enjoyed it. And really? I saw why it got the, the kudos. Hmm. What's your take on it? Uh, you know, I thought it was very, very good. I saw it for the first time about two, three years ago. Oh, wow. Um, you know, I had never seen it earlier. Because to be honest with you, Westerns was never really my big thing. My I was either, never really into Westerns. Some I love. Um, so I had to go back on this one, really, because... Uh, I like Gene Hackman. Mm. I really like Clint Eastwood. So, you know, that's why I eventually did see it. I thought it was really good. I I thought it was the last really, really good performance by Clint Eastwood. Right. That's probably true. Uh, it's also just, uh, you're right, it's a good, I'm not a huge Western fan either. Yeah. Um, Westerns were really the 40s, 50s, you know, 60s. Yeah, John Wayne. Yeah. You know, ultimate um, macho bad guy. But that is an example of one that really is done right. Mm-hmm. It's also just a really good character study. Yeah. Because his character was a cold-blooded killer. Yeah. It was who, so subtle. Yeah, he retired and settled yeah. down, and then he's yeah. basically kind of forced back into it. Yeah. I always remember as a kid watching it, that scene where he just he shoots the person, yeah. and they just sit and wait while the guy bleeds out, and he's like, son, you're dying. And it, it was so like lifelike and real yeah. as a I, you know i was probably 12 when i watched it i was mm-hmm. like what's going on it was such a different type of violence and action um but then yeah when i rewatched it a few years ago i mean gene hackman was such a good bad guy in yeah. it um i loved the relationship with clint eastwood and uh morgan freeman uh, i thought it was a good film agreed I don't know if it deserved Best Picture, but whatever. Again, that was probably a similar thing where it was like Clint Eastwood deserves, uh, you know, yeah. it's time he that we so many good award movies him. up to that point. Exactly. The same with Gene Hackman. Right. Yeah, he was phenomenal. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep going. Let's see. Um, oh, okay. So 1993. One of the most gripping. Schindler's oh List. Oh, my God. In my entire life that will actually impact you. I never saw Schindler's List in the theater, yeah. and I'm actually glad I didn't. Uh, because I don't know if I would have been able to have handled it in the theater. Um, I remember we rented Schindler's List, me and some friends of ours, in the good old days of Blockbuster. Yes, and, oh, God, I miss Blockbuster. Uh, I mean, number one, it's like a three-and-a-half-hour movie. Number two, it's all about the Holocaust, and yeah. it's so 
brutal and it blunt and visceral. The film is phenomenal, yeah. but it, it's it's very hard to stomach. It is. We we had to rent it. I remember this very mm-hmm. clearly. We had to rent it about three or four times over a two month period to get through it. Yeah, what we would do uh-huh. is we would watch like forty minutes of it. It would get too heavy, and then we would put on like some cheesy comedy, uh-huh. and then we would have to return it to the video store. And then uh-huh. next week we would rent it and we would watch like another thirty forty minutes. I mean, the shower scene with the women when you think they're going to get gassed, and the for, scenes for, where they just me, the line scene, up yeah. people. Yeah, and, when uh, he's uh, Ralph Fiennes is up there on the on the balcony and uh, just just popping them off like it's like oh well, yeah, you know, casual. You know, I just had my cigarette this morning, you know, like like that. That's right. He plays a character called Eamon Goth. That yeah. was actually the film that put um, Ralph Fiennes on the map. He got an Oscar nomination. To this day, I think the best acting performance uh, he's ever done. It's. Brutal, but also um, Ben uh, Kingsley again. Ben Kingsley, who's the accountant, was just fantastic. Yeah. That, that, in that scene film. where the, where they um, they want to repay uh, oh, Liam at the end, right? and they they take the the gold they take tooth the gold out tooth and they like that. all melt it into like, a ring. How do you not feel that? And then he has a breakdown because he feels like he didn't do enough. We're right. jumping all over the place, but yeah, basically, yeah. so it's Amazing. Spiel. It's one of Spielberg's crowning achievements he won best director it won best picture yeah. ralph fiends was no- nominated uh for the villain uh, he's just haunting in that yeah. film and then uh, liam neeson is oscar schindler he's phenomenal and ben kingsley is phenomenal um and it's the true story of oscar schindler who was actually like this nazi german business guy yeah. who basically saw a huge shift when he saw what was happening with the holocaust he had to do something and he started hiring all these jews yeah basically to save their lives that's right that's and he right. saved thousands of lives yeah i mean they uh, the official numbers is something like somewhere around um yeah uh, a couple thousand and that number of people because of the generations on exactly. now it's like so it, essentially there's like twenty thousand people that are alive today because of him this right one and guy the so. um the ending of Schindler's List mm-hmm. is so effective where it yeah. flashes to present time in and the nineties. And they all put the roses and all of the real people that are still Tears, alive with the showers. actors who portrayed them, oh, who go yeah. and they put roses on Oscar Schindler's grave. Yeah, that film is hairs on the back of your neck. Like, phenomenal. I'm getting goosebumps talking yeah, about it. Exactly. That's a true masterpiece <laughs> you know what's uh, interesting about this movie is that you know for me it's it's so impacting everything like that my wife is from israel oh wow so for her it's very real actually where uh in israel uh in school at uh, you know three years old four years old six year old they actually show them uh clips of the holocaust like okay to remember don't ever forget right and so for her she cannot watch this film she yeah. can't she can't you know you talk about it, you couldn't i get could imagine it she, might be too much for yeah, some people she can't do it to me, uh, I think it's too important not to see, but I actually can totally agree. respect that. Uh, it's such a tough film. It, it's a masterpiece. Anyway, Fantastic film. Yeah. And, Completely and I, deserved everything it got. Yeah. And also the same year, I mean, Spielberg had such a banner year. Jurassic Park came out that same oh, year. Oh, my God. I which forgot. was a huge blockbuster. I forgot that it was the same year. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Wow. And I mean, that's why I'm sorry. Spielberg... And then, he, and then he basically went life. into uh, remission. Like he just went, you know, I'm just going to do producing for the next 20 years. Well, he did Saving Private Ryan a few years later. He so. did. Yeah, that's that's true. He, yeah. he once in a once in a while he comes out. So yeah, I'm going to do a whole Spielberg episode too because you should. I'm really excited for Ready Player One because I love the book and that's coming out next year. I'm I'm jazzed. I want to actually read the book because so I, many people have been talking about it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. I haven't loved his films in the last decade, but Spielberg will always still be my favorite director because. I mean, his body of work is unparalleled. You can forgive the yeah. the misses. Yeah. Um, okay, good. Let's keep going. I think yeah. we're almost done. This is going to be an extra long episode, but I think we'll just wrap it up all in one go. Okay. Uh, I'm having fun, Matt. This is like yeah. an intellectual this is awesome. and a deep, you know, dive study, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I like it. And we're, we've actually been on the same page with most things, which uh, for the most part I've been impressed with. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. So yeah, I mean, Schindler's List. Uh, I mean, if you haven't seen that movie. Total classic. Absolute must uh, watch. Really exactly. for everyone. Okay, good. Next one. 1994, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Do you love Forrest Gump? You know, I wouldn't say it's a best picture kind of thing, but it was entertaining. It was kind of like one of those movies um, that you put it, obviously they put on TNT all the time, <laughs> um, but it's thoroughly entertaining. Okay. It feels good to watch. It's a, whatever. It's entertaining, but I wouldn't say it's some 
crazy, amazing, you know, especially when it falls after Schindler's List. Yeah. So if I compare them, I mean, Schindler's List is, so it's is not, it's not it's apples and oranges. But um, let me tell you something. So yeah. I remember watching uh, Forrest Gump when it came out in the theater. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's Robert Zemeckis. I think uh, right. Tom Hanks won the Oscar for it. Yes, it he had just won the year before for Philadelphia. Yeah, did He's, he win three in a row? Two in a row. Two in a row. Philadelphia okay. and Forrest Gump. And he was nominated for um, a Castaway, if like two years later. Uh, I think he was also nominated for uh, Big, but 13, that was earlier. Um, um, Thirteen. Uh, you know the astronauts going. Oh, Whatever. Apollo 13. Apollo 13. Oh, that's got... possible. I'm not so, sure. Anyways, okay. Um, but anyway, so Forrest Gump, I remember seeing in the theater, mm -hmm. and I remember enjoying it. Mm -hmm. um, here's what I find interesting about Forrest Gump. So when it came out, I liked it. I didn't love it either when it came out. Well, now, were you, is this like a, a so American and Maybe British that's what, thing? Yeah, like a, see, that's interesting. Very, it's, it's a very a, distinct cultural it's American It's a very thing. American movie. Southern American. Yeah, I still enjoyed it, but I just didn't so, love it. Then yeah. it got all the accolades. Now, here's what's interesting about Forrest Gump. Mm -hmm. This is one of the films, I don't know if you know this, that over the years has really been depreciated by critics. Critic, a lot of critics yeah. consider Forrest Gump not a good movie anymore. Interesting. However, it's one of the most beloved and popular movies Absolutely. of all time. Absolutely. And from repeat viewings, mm -hmm. I've grown to love this movie. It's enjoyable. I yeah. also have to tread lightly. It's one of my wife's favorite films. As a matter of fact, I think it's Danny's favorite film of all time. I don't know why I'm whispering because she's going to edit this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she's going to um, hear it. Yeah. Um, but it's actually true. The more times I've seen it, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate it even more. And I just realized maybe I love it a lot more now because I've watched it four or five times with my wife and just watching her giddy. I mean, she Light loves up. this movie to bits. But it's also quite a brilliant movie, how it goes through, sorry, how it goes through the decades. And um, it's quite a somber film. Yeah, it know? is. It's just tragedy after tragedy. I mean, yeah. even in the end, even though it's kind of a a, a good ending, Not it's, really. still, it's still, it's still, it has that silver lining. You know what I mean? Yeah. And He's the, got, his kid is doesn't have his problem. Right. Which is great. But then, you know. Yeah. You know, the okay. guy who, the kid who plays his son is Haley Joel Osmo. A I very know. young Haley Joel Osmo. I know. Yeah, and Robin Wright is fantastic in this film. Mm -hmm. Gary Sinise is excellent. excellent. And then Sally Field, I thought, was just phenomenal. In she was. Forrest she was very Gump. good. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, so I actually, I, I've i grown to love this film, but it took about two decades. That, that's interesting to think. I, I wonder if it is that. It's, it's a very Southern American culture yeah. movie. If it's you, very I, possible. I, I can pretty much guarantee if you took this to, like nowadays, it's all about make a movie, get it overseas. Right. Make it, you know, water down a little bit so you can do that. I don't think this is the kind of movie that can do that. Yeah. Yeah. And also I find it interesting that so many people consider it kind of like such a fun, feel-good movie when it's not at all. There's so many somber tones. It's so tragic and heartbreaking. Yeah, all the stuff that, that Robin Wright goes through her entire yeah. life. My and God. the speech he, I mean, spoiler, but it's been out yeah. for 25 years. Yeah. The speech, he, the monologue he gives at her grave at the yeah. end. Oh, yeah. it's, it's gut-wrenching. Yeah. All right. Anyway, Forrest Gump. It, it's yeah. it's a great film. Yeah. People should check it out. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Okay. All right. 1995. Yeah. Braveheart. This is all. I mean, this is Freedom! right in my wheelhouse. Oh, exactly. Isn't that? Uh, that film is so good. Mel Gibson. Say what you will about Mel Gibson. That guy can direct. He he's can a decent direct actor. Well, he's but he still, can he's direct. still got it as a director. Hacksaw I mean, Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge. Yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. Um, uh, Braveheart is such an epic. Um, you know, look, one pet peeve is it tells the story of William Wallace and it really right. stretches it does. the it is historical not accuracy. It is not. Well, William Wallace did not shag the princess of England. Really? <laughs> that didn't happen. Yeah. But there are also apparently a lot of other inaccuracies, timelines, things like that. Yeah. But just as pure entertainment, that film is so epic yeah. and it's got everything. Action, romance, comedy, drama, Everything. epic battle sequences, yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, he won the Oscar for um, for it for totally best picture. Well deserved. He directed it. Which you, I mean, what's kind of funny about this particular movie, which strikes me even today, is that that movie apparently was made for like forty million dollars. Right. I mean, today that movie wouldn't be given the light of day. Well, also, I mean, I maybe with Amazon, Netflix. Well, now, it, it's but. a lot of practical effects. They didn't use all the CGI because you That's know what right. budgets go to now is CGI. Yeah. All yeah. the computer graphics. True. True. Spend a hundred million dollars on that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, but it's a very good, fantastic point. movie. Yeah, Braveheart is phenomenal, and yeah. it, and I, it stands 
the test of time. Totally. It holds up so well. It's I, one I of those movies, it. if it's on TV and I see it for two seconds, okay, that's the my next two to three hours, gone. Yeah, I saw it last last year. There it's phenomenal. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, let's see what else we got here. English um, Patient. The English yeah. Patient. Okay, okay. I find this one very interesting. It's a disturbing movie. Okay, so it was Anthony Minghella directed it, uh, mm-hmm. who has since died in real life. Um, and it's also Ra- it's Ralph Fiennes yeah. um, and Kristen Scott Thomas. It was the film that kind of made her a, quite a star at the time. Mm-hmm. When that film came out, I loved it. I thought it was a sprawling really? epic. Um, I tried to rewatch it a year ago and I was like, oh my God, this film does not hold up. Absolutely hated it. It From really day does one, not the hold first up. Time I saw it, I really? Hated it. Hated it. So, well, maybe because it's called The English Patient and I'm British. I don't know. Uh, when it came maybe. out, yeah. it got so much acclaim. Force I... Gump for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I enjoyed it then, but actually now yeah. I completely agree with you. I, yeah. I couldn't even get through it. It was so slow. Yeah. It was so somber. I found no redeeming quality in the not characters. Um, you know, it yes, it was pretty to look at at times, but uh, yeah, but so it does not stand the test of no, time it does not. at all. Okay, I'm glad we agree on that. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see what else. Okay, 1997 Titanic. Titanic. Iconic. Okay, here's what's interesting about mm-hmm. Titanic. Number one, that film had so much difficulties getting made. Yes, I don't did. know if you know that the there were there were infamous stories yeah. about how it went over budget. It was one of the most expensive Way films ever made. Um, James Cameron directed it, mm-hmm. uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, um, Kate Winslet, yep. uh, Billy Zane, who I'm sorry, Billy Zane does not get enough credit. He, he did is a very good job. so good in that film. Yep. Um, and I remember when that film got released, critics initially, I remember like the LA Times, I think, were one of the critics who were very harsh with that film saying it was going to tank. Really? And then the rest is history. It became the biggest movie of, of all, all time, time the highest time. grossing yeah. movie of all time yeah. until James Cameron outed himself right. with Avatar. And obviously that set a precedent in terms of, <laughs> hey, I'll go over budget, but I'll make you a lot of money. Right. Well, it made 2.2 or $2.4 billion. Yes, yeah. Um, but here's the thing. I watched that film in the theater, yeah. and I remember it was one of the only movies I ever watched that had an intermission. Because it's like a four-hour-long film. I don't remember in England. That. It had an intermission. Wow. Um, I loved it when it came out. I thought it was unlike anything I had ever seen. I mm-hmm. thought it was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, all the women lapped it up because it's yeah. essentially a romance set to the yeah. backdrop of. Titanic. I don't know a single girl that uh, from <laughs> my age group back then that wasn't in love with Leonardo DiCaprio. So again, I was. So. I loved making Danny watch it. My wife is quite young. Oh, quite a lot younger so than she, me. So she didn't get to experience that. She watched Titanic for the first time with now she me loves about two or three years ago. It was just so adorable. She was yeah. like, Jack, hold on. What's going to happen to him? Because she oh, had no idea. Go. She didn't know There was, was room on that oh, on that God. board. There was room. That's a never-ending debate. <laughs> you know, there was room on the raft. Uh, they could, and it also, he only tried once to get on the raft, and then he gave up and froze to death. I know, It's seriously. such bullshit. Uh, yeah. um, anyway, she loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, when I watched it in the theater... I thought it was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Then when I rewatched it on home video, I was like, yeah, it's all right. But it, because of my wife and, you know, I have a lot of female friends. I've watched it again a few times since then. Mm-hmm. We got a big, uh, you know, big TV and we right. watched it on like um, Blu-ray because it looked That's so good. That's the way to do it. Yeah. And, and I've kind of started to appreciate the film a bit more. Yeah. It actually, it still holds up. Do you like Titanic? Uh, you know, I thought it was very enjoyable. I liked it. Um, it's not one of, on my top of my list right. anywhere near or something like that. Yeah, but me it was neither. a thoroughly enjoyable film. Honestly, the thing that actually bothered me the most about the film, the whole throwing the diamond in the water at the oh, end. Oh, God. I was just like, no, what are yeah. you doing? Why would you do that? The That's entire so obnoxious. movie. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. You know, there was an alternate ending. I felt sorry for Bill Paxton. Did, did you ever hear about the no, alternate ending? No, tell me. They, they filmed an alternate ending, and it was it was the original ending. And it was uh, something along the lines that Bill Paxton comes out there, and she actually gives him the diamond or something like that. That's what they should have done. I don't done. remember. I, I remember seeing it many years ago, but they did it in the test audiences, and the test audiences, like, it, it didn't score well at all. Really? And so that's why they changed it to her throwing the diamond and all this kind of stuff and never finding it. Such bullshit. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Um, anyway, I mean, it, it's such a great uh, accomplishment in filmmaking. I mean, it went on to win 11 Oscars. Right. You know, James Cameron exclaiming, I am the king of the world. Um, and it, I think it holds up quite well. I, I believe so. 
Yep, you want to say something else about Titanic? No, I, you know, it's it's funny because it, it did deserve all the worst that it got. And for me, the biggest thing on it was that, I mean, obviously every time James Cameron does a movie now, he takes whatever technical skills within the business and takes it to another level. Right. And at that time, that was a totally different level. This is, this is 1997. This is pre- really good cgi like this is and the, you know the I mean? boat the effects and are still incredible you can still watch it right yeah. now and it makes sense they man. really hold how up. many movies you see now you see cgi and you go that's cgi right. and it's terrible. terminator 2 another cameron right. film it's incredible and they but, don't have 1997 computers right so, yeah. yeah no i agree with you and then obviously avatar topped it and again a lot of people kind of go, avatar's not that great but yeah. all i'll tell you is this avatar wasn't the best film in the world but i no. understand why it's the highest grossing film of all time yeah. It was unlike anything else I had never ever seen, seen when like I saw it in 3D yeah. in the and theater. And you know they, you, you know that they originally they did have 3D movies back in the 1950s, right? So they had it, and then it just it, it phased out 1950s? because they 1950s, the 1950s going into the uh, early 1960s, like really when color was really kind of the uh, you know uh, becoming big, and they had a uh, 3D, but it was the little glasses where you have where it's like red in one and then blue in the other. And that was whatever. So it was very cheesy. Wow. And so it didn't last very long. So then it didn't get revived until he did that movie. And then obviously it became the thing. And now it's phasing out, it seems like, you know, all that hmm. kind of stuff. So that's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, look, Titanic, I, it absolutely deserves the accolades because it's also a film that just has everything. It's yeah. such epic filmmaking. It's mm-hmm. comedy, action, drama, and obviously romance. Um, but yeah, I, I understand why, it, you know, it, it got all the awards and it does stand the test of time. Okay. All right, let's keep going here. We're, we're getting down the list. Um, okay, so this one um, is probably the other biggest snub that pisses me off, which is uh, Shakespeare in Love. Yeah, who was it? What it's was 1998. it? 1998. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow won the— Well, uh, no, I remember that, but what was it? What did it beat? Saving Private Ryan. That's right. That's the one I was—okay. Yeah. So— um, I would agree with you on that. Yeah, it, it was a huge shock for people. Everyone thought Absolutely. Saving Private Ryan was a shoe in Yeah. Um, for best picture and best director. I mean, to me, that's the greatest action mo- war movie of all time, but just yeah. also as storytelling. It, it, you've seen Saving Private Ryan. I completely agree. And I, and I think it's it phenomenal. should have won hands down. Yeah. So now, I, saying that, <laughs> I love this movie. Oh, so you actually love Shakespeare in Love? I did. Oh, I, okay. I, I, well, yeah, I've seen it like three or four bit, times. Then. And really? I actually very, very, li- very much liked it. I liked it when it came out. And I remember yeah. I tried to re watch it and it, yeah. it and just it didn't, didn't have hold the same feel? I just wasn't invested. And maybe because I have such a grudge that it yeah. beat Saving like, Private uh, Ryan. <laughs> Uh, Tell me yeah, about it. you know, honestly, I haven't seen it in a few years, you know, okay. so I, I can't say that I've rewatched it and now it just tans, stands up to the test of time. I don't know. Right. But it, I've seen it probably two or three times back in the day. And, and especially the first time I saw it, I really enjoyed it. And that was the first and only time I've ever really liked Gwyneth Paltrow. Hmm. Yeah, um, she is good in it. She won the yeah, Oscar. Yeah, she, she was very good in it. Um, and this is and oddly Ralph, enough because I'm not. It's Ralph Fiennes' brother, Joseph Fiennes, who plays Shakespeare. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And then Jeffrey Rush and, you know, classic Jeffrey Rush. Um, so I th- I thoroughly enjoyed it. And actually a young Ben Affleck. He's actually good in that. He I remember good. Ben He's Affleck good. is good in that. That's right. Um, so I thoroughly enjoyed the movie, but I completely agree with you. They should not have won. And that was a uh, Harvey Weinstein movie, by the way, that really kind of yeah. catapulted him. Let's not mention their, Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's not go there. So, um, you know, here's what's interesting. Um, so I. Saving Private Ryan is absolutely a superior movie that should have won. One thing I remember, though, at the time was I was a bit conflicted because I was also kind of chuffed and proud that mm-hmm. a, such a big British movie right. swept the Oscar and, and beat it from uh, a big American right, you're movie. You're like, yeah. And then you're like, yeah. wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, I don't know. Uh, for me, Shakespeare in Love, I, mm-hmm. I tried to rewatch it a few years ago yeah. and it, it, I just it didn't hold up for I, me I, at I'll all. I'll have to try it newly. And see yeah. if it actually stands the test of time. Okay, good. So here's another movie that has been greatly depreciated by critics, mm-hmm. which I totally disagree with them on. I yeah. still love this movie. It's uh, 1999, American, American Beauty. Beauty. Now, obviously, ugh, it's just so annoying. Yeah. I mean, Kevin Spacey, so now he's yeah, under the whole scandal. Yeah. I don't know what to say. As an actor, I still think he was phenomenal. Um, I... Don't know what it is about that movie, but I love American Beauty. Do you like that film? You know, I have very conflicting feelings. A lot of people don't like it. It's not, well, it's not a thing that I hate and it's not a thing I love. And it's one of those weird movies. There's very few movies in my life where it just kind of like it was right in the middle because there's Mm. some things I like about it and some things that are just like, 
you know, just yeah. always weird. I was there's spend... the whole artsy thing with the whole bag and then right. the daughter and all this kind of stuff. Oh, the and, back in the air and yeah. recording it. And even at the time, even though I was that age and that was maybe it should have spoken to me, right. I thought that was weird. So for some reason, it really spoke to me as just yeah. this art film. Okay. Again, I, I won't spend too much time in it because yeah. I know now Kevin Spacey's name is all soiled, but yeah. I thought the performance was just incredible i'll agree with that Annette, yeah. he won the oscar for it yeah. Annette benning was i thought incredible and again was snubbed of an oscar and then um wes bentley played the kid who re recorded the bag in the wind right. and i i remember when i saw that film i thought that kid was gonna go places and he just didn't really? for, for me for me the performance in the movie like other than kevin spacey obviously you know whatever chris the, cooper uh is, is that too. his name the the, the, the neighbor yeah the, the father. father yeah okay chris yeah. cooper that's the one that he was, was fantastic. That, that role sticks to me uh, to this day, like Kevin Spacey and then him, and especially yeah. the scene where they do. Ha that's the oh, electricity the, the for the finale. Film. At the end. For me, that's the electricity in the film. Oh, yeah. When he kisses him. and oh. Yeah. And you're like, and then, of so course, conflicted. where it ends up and everything like yeah. that. Yeah. That, that's, and then, a, yeah, a yeah. young Thora Birch, who's the, who's yeah. the daughter. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, that film spoke to me. Um, I remember watching it again a few years ago. And I still... Oh, and also Mene Suvarni, the, the girl from yeah. Amer uh, American that's Pie. Right. That's right. I think I said her name wrong. Um, uh, I love yeah, that film. We'll, we'll move on. <laughs> a lot of critics yeah. don't think that film is great. And it's one of those movies that they say shouldn't have won Best Picture. I yeah. disagree. I really like it. Yeah. Okay. We spent a lot of time on that one, even though we didn't yeah. want to. <laughs> okay. Let's go. So, um, now, okay. Gladiator. So 2000 Gladiator. Yeah. I love this movie. Yeah. Uh, a lot of women I speak to don't think this movie is that great. So I, it might be a film that just really speaks to men. Who are you talking to? Uh, well, <laughs> this Miss, is one of the best movies of all time. Daniela, my wife, Absolutely Yenny, my co-host. And, you know, I, I think it, all I'm saying is I think it probably speaks to men more than women, I guess. Well, I'll give um, you that. But, it's yeah. Maximus Commodus. It's Russell Crowe. He won the Oscar. Yeah, but your Queen oh, Phoenix, his role oh, in that. Such Joaquin a good Phoenix was such bad a guy. sniveling villain. Um, it, when he's it, sitting there and he's doing the, uh, you know, with it with his sister, and it's like, you know, telling her how much he he loves he has her this and this perverse it's love for his so sister. So creepy. Ugh. So good. So, um, I love Gladiator through and through. I think the I battle sequences agree. are incredible. Ridley Scott directed it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I've and, probably seen this thirty times. And the music. Is music is absolutely epic. gorgeous it yeah. really is it's quite moving at, at the end where they pick him uh, up and like you know soldier of rome you know yeah. he deserves a whatever like that's hard not to have emotion yeah on oh and he has that line are you not entertained yeah exactly i mean the gladiator fights with the tigers and stuff yeah. it's such oh and then uh the african-american actor who's great dimon uh, his you he's got the weird name yes he's phenomenal he is it. great yeah, i i love I gladiator i i do think it's a movie that you know men just bro out on <laughs> uh, i agree it, i think women should watch it and appreciate it <laughs> yeah and i'm sure there are many women who love it uh, too. i'm sure i'm sure <laughs> okay let's see um okay so next is actually another russell crowe movie at 2001 right. a beautiful mind beautiful mind uh, have you seen that i have definitely seen that so it's about a, a mathematician john nash who was basically kind of nuts yeah he saw people but he was also but brilliant was, yeah when I saw that movie mm -hmm. for the first time, Ron mm -hmm. Howard directed it. That's right. One Best Picture. It was one of Paul Bettany's first uh, supporting roles. I thought he was fantastic. Yeah. I thought Russell Crowe was incredible in this movie. Yeah. And I loved this movie when it came out. Jennifer Connelly also won Best Supporting Actress. I love Actress. Jennifer Connelly. I don't she know. I have a is, massive crush oh, on her. So. Dude. <laughs> Ever since <laughs> my days of seeing both. her in Labyrinth when I was a kid. Like, you know. She's gorgeous. Don't, yeah, Paul don't get Bettany, me started. Uh, and they're, they're married, married right? in real life. Yeah, Lucky right. bastard. Seriously. Um, here's what's odd. I've mm -hmm. rewatched The Beautiful Mind. It's yeah. still good. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hold up as well. It doesn't mean it's a bad really? movie. I, it, I can't say I've seen it since that time. I have because I'm crazy. I rewatch yeah. movies huh. a lot. I thought that movie was magical when it came out and I saw it a few times and I absolutely loved it. When I um, watched it again about a year or two ago, I thought it was good, but I was surprised that it didn't hold up as well. Interesting. Now, um, why would you say that? What, what exactly about it do you feel that didn't hold up? Um, I think the performance is actually a little overdone. Really? Um, I think the direction is a little over dramatic. It's a very kind of dramatic movie. Well, I mean, that's Ron Howard. I guess so. It, 
it just didn't speak to me yeah. the same way. Some films stick with you and always have that magic and yeah. some don't. Huh? I mean, as I told you, I'll like you when, when The English Patient came out, I remember I loved no, it. Absolutely. And then when I rewatched it, I, it was a complete reverse. I was like, yeah. God, I can't even get through it. This is so s pretentious and slow and yeah. I couldn't stand it. Yeah. So it was a complete different uh, like concept yeah. that I got from it. Wow. Um, anyway, A, a Beautiful Mind's a good film. Good I don't film. know if it should have won Best Picture. I don't know. Well, um, I don't remember who it was up against it that year. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, we're getting there. We're almost done. Yeah, so um, We're getting there. We're in the 2000s. 2000s. We've gone from 1927 and we're in the 2000s. Mm -hmm. All right, Chicago, 2002. Chicago. Have you seen that movie? I have seen it. I'm uh, not I'm a, a fan. big fan of musicals. Yeah. You know, I'm a, especially Broadway. You know, my wife and I love to go to, to those kind of things. But to be honest with you, I think this was got all the accolades it did because there hadn't been a really good musical in a long time. Right. So it was one of the first films musical that won That's Best right. Picture. It's, it's a revival, like coming back, you know, right. that kind of thing. But I do not believe this was like crazy good movie so Catherine zeta jones won the oscar Which, for best supporting right. actress mm -hmm. uh, renee zellweger mm -hmm. richard Gere, queen latitha john c Riley. Yeah. i've seen it i don't really enjoy it my wife loves it yeah. so i can't say much else about <laughs> it <laughs> um right. but that's okay uh we'll move on okay uh, okay good so uh the lord of the rings the return of the king yeah 2003 yeah yeah um the Lord of the Rings films, just so you know, are my favorite films of all yeah. time. Um, Dead Poet Society and the Lord of the Rings trilogy. That's a um, good list. That's a <laughs> um, damn good list. I mean, obviously, it's so hard to give your best, but um, right. I, I, I mean, I loved the the J.R.R. Tolkien books as mm -hmm. a child. Mm -hmm. I'm someone who actually read them several times. Right. Those films transported me. Peter Jackson knocked it out of the park. And Return of the King was everything I wanted it to be. And when everyone complains about those multiple endings, I understand what he was doing. It was so hard for him to let go. I yeah. mean, that was his baby for like yeah. four years. Now, yeah. since I've basically worshipped these movies, do you like them? I, I love the movies. Okay, thank oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I love the movies. Uh, I think Return of the King was the best of the three. I felt a little bit at the time that it was interesting. I think it was more of like I, I remember watching vividly the award ceremony and they were just winning everything. Right. But for me, it was not that I felt like everybody in the Academy loved the film. Right. I think they went, well, he deserves it. Because, I think they were uh, because respecting all three the were work. so good. Yeah. Because generally the Academy did with, with sci-fi, fantasy, fantasy, action, yeah. anything like that. That's not like a drama they don't tend to to give these kind of accolades. So I think it was, it was uh, we appreciate the amount of work you did on these three films because they were all really, really good. Yeah, it was groundbreaking. So. I mean, Peter Jackson wasn't a huge director. No, he had done, I don't like, remember anything he'd done before that. He had done B horror movies and wow. he had done a film called heavenly creatures with kate winslet how do you go from that and you get you get approved like right. they say yeah you're the guy right and he had in mckellen as gandalf who was yeah. quite well known but he had uh kate blanchard as well but then he had like uh, elijah wood mm -hmm. um as um frodo baggins that's right uh, but vigo mortensen as aragorn vigo was not huge yeah, then that made him a star it did absolutely uh, right. uh orlando, orlando bloom, bloom made as legolas star. made I him mean, a star he kind of went off his career kind right. of, you know he never really downs. achieved the right. a-list status <laughs> but, um yeah. you know to me the lord of the rings was an event that consumed my life for like four years wow yeah um yeah. i saw those films in the theater mm -hmm. multiple times yeah. um and i didn't have a lot of time on my hands in those days and i still mm -hmm. managed to um and uh, you know this is something i think that's a real testament to the lord of the rings trilogy is they released those, as you know, like the unedited full version movies. Yeah. They're like five hours long. I have all those. Long. I have all. I, not only yeah. do I have them all, mm -hmm. I've watched them all about 10 or 15 times. Wow. That's amazing. I've sat down at nine o'clock in the morning and I've watched all three films till like midnight. Wow. You know, binging it with friends. Well, I remember when the third one was coming out, when Return of the King was coming out and they did this whole thing in the theaters um, where they, it was like, uh, the Thursday and then at Friday, like Thursday at midnight, they would show Return of the King. So they did like a marathon. That's right. Where they, they did, did the other two and then leading up to it. So it'd be like nine hours of just watching that. And it was like the hottest ticket in town. Yeah. I wanted to go so bad, but I don't remember. It was just something I, I couldn't do at the time, but I wanted to. So. 
Yeah, so the reason why I personally think they worked so well and also they've stood the test of time is that it was such epic filmmaking and he got almost everything right. The CGI, the effects, mm -hmm. the, the grand action, the scale, the sets, mm -hmm. it was the cinematography, the costumes, yeah, it was the so New epic. New Zealand was on the map. Oh. New uh, Zealand how, tourism. How many, I was going to say, affluence. how much money have they made because of these films? Peter Millions. Jackson will never be able, never have to pay for a meal or a drink in that country ever again. Right. So you had all of that. Then the story itself was obviously phenomenal from yeah. J.R.R. Tolkien's book. Yeah. But then the characters, the casting was so pitch perfect. I yeah. mean, Viggo Mortensen, as you said, I mean, yeah. he was just incredible right as Aragorn. Mm -hmm. You know, Pippin, Merry, Frodo, Sam, Sean Samwise. Austin as Sean Austin. Samwise Gamgee. Yeah. Oh. That and Goonies, the, the the most iconic roles. Well, now you have Stranger Things. You He's can add so to that, good yeah. as Bob Newby, yeah. superhero. Bob. Bob the Brain. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so I could probably, I'm going to do like an, an episode entirely devoted to lord of the rings one day but um yeah. you're right return of the king was kind of the culmin culmination for the whole trilogy yeah i mean it won 12 oscars yeah and um, and that was that was hollywood going okay yeah we want to appreciate the what you did yeah because this was a massive undertaking yeah and then peter jackson went and did the hobbit right you know, and it Which was, was supposed to be it was supposed to be uh del toro wasn't it originally? yeah guillermo del toro yeah, and they just stretched out and then he said fine i'll do it and then it was gonna be uh, two movies and then it stretched to three movies that's the one mistake they made again i understand yeah. why they did it but the yeah. hobbit is only a three to four hundred page book i know well they put in all the extra uh yeah. from a, a cimmerillion i think yeah. it's called yeah yeah whatever so yeah anyway it was we good digress. but uh return of the king yep. absolutely deserves it phenomenal film Great. okay i'm gonna move on uh so 2004 yeah, million dollar baby. Um, million dollar baby. Mm -hmm. um, so that's um, what's the actress's name? Hilary Swank. So she won the Oscar. That's the right. funny thing is, she's been nominated twice, I think, mm -hmm. and won both times. Yeah. yeah. Um, I saw this. It's directed mm -hmm. by Clint Eastwood. Mm -hmm. It was too much of a Debbie Downer. Too too much of a letdown for me. Have you yeah. seen this film? Do you like it? What's uh, your take? You know, I'm right there with you on that. Um, I remember seeing that, and it was I, I I only wanted to watch it one time because it was right. you know the family, the stuff she went with the family, and then and obviously it was heartbreaking the, the fact twist. that she loses. Yeah, like so, who wins? Nobody wins in this movie yeah. at, at all. all. Nothing. Neither does he. So, so yeah, Million Dollar Baby, Hilary yeah. Swank. It's about a female boxer, yeah. um, and it starts off as like a sports movie with Clint Eastwood being her trainer, mm -hmm. and then it just takes a total tonal shift. Exactly when she and, has to fight. Uh, yeah, and she gets essentially paralyzed. Yeah, and then he has to decide to euthanize her because yeah, she wants him to whether euthanize she lives. her. Yeah, win or live. Yeah. It, anyway, it was a very depressing film. It was yeah. well made, but um, I don't think it deserved Best yeah. Picture. Yeah, it's kind of funny if you think about it, the like uh, similarities, you know, with um, uh, what was the movie with Meryl Streep where she had to choose Sophie's between her kids? Choice. Yeah, oh. like right there, like he had to choose. That was a rough film too. Yeah. yeah. See, Million Dollar Baby performance, she deserved the completely the, agree. The Oscar, um, yeah. same with Street for Sophie's Choice. Yeah. I didn't think the film as a whole was phenomenal, personally. Um, but that's just me. Yeah. Okay, we're almost done. So uh, 2005 Crash. Have you seen that film? Uh, I have seen it. Um, Do you in... like it? On the fence. So here's what's interesting about I don't Crash. think it should have won uh, Best Picture. Okay, and most critics And it was like don't. out of left field when it... Right. Uh, Brokeback Mountain, everyone thought was going to win, which was the gay cowboy movie That's with right. uh, Heath Ledger, who yeah. I love Heath Ledger and Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal. Um, critics, this is the film that critics reviled the most that they out feel... Out of all the Oscar winners. They feel that shouldn't have won Best Picture. Yeah. Now, okay. here's what's interesting to me about Crash. It's actually not a great film. It really isn't. And it, it's quite pretentious mm -hmm. it has two of the most incredible sequences to me the one with michael pena and his daughter oh heartbreaking and then the one with yeah. matt dillon and thandy newton when he saves her from the car and then she realizes right. he's the cop that uh molested her that's right those two sequences are phenomenal which is why i like the film but well to be honest with you if those two see if those two sequences are not in the film right it's a forgettable film. Yeah. And it that's never gets the nominated thing. for anything. Yeah, it has too many storylines. Yeah. Uh, it is quite pretentious. Yeah. Um, anyway, I find it interesting that um, mm. critics really think that that film has not stood up well. Um, because of those two scenes, I still like it. But yeah. 
but I understand. It's not something I would ever feel the need to go watch again. Right. Okay, good. So next is, uh, we're almost there, um, 2006. Is it 2006? Yep, 2006. The Departed. Yeah. Um, so look, The Departed is a good film. Martin mm-hmm. Scorsese mm-hmm. finally won his, his Oscar. Um, what pisses me off mm-hmm. is it's just not his best film. It's yeah. got great performances from Jack Matt Nicholson. Damon, Jack Nicholson, Alec Baldwin, Mark Leonardo Wahlberg, DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, one reason why... I don't love that movie as much as a lot of other people as it's a remake of a foreign Asian movie called Internal Affairs. Oh, is it really? I didn't know that. Which is really good. Oh, I've wow. seen it because okay. I like a lot of foreign movies. Okay. Um, the Departed is a good mobster movie. It's, it's well a, done. It's a good one. It's a good one. And and I completely agree. Like everyone brought their A game on this particular movie. Sure. So the acting performances are amazing. For me, I remember very specifically in the movie theater, obviously when uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character literally like, it's it gave no justice in terms of uh, the oh. elevator door, boom, he's dead. Yeah, the and I main was like, character. <laughs> "Why did I just watch three hours of this movie?" Like, I honestly felt that. Yeah, like there was no, uh, it, it didn't suffice. Like it, he should have died in a more epic way or something. Like, Spoilers. I mean, obviously, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't worry, it's like ten, fifteen. I know, years seriously. Old. The Titanic sinks. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I agree. So, I mean, that I actually think you're right. The Departed is an all-around solid film. Yeah. I mean, as I said, Scorsese. He, I mean, he did Raging Bull. He did Goodfellas. He yeah. did even The Aviator. Yeah. That I thought were superior films. Yeah. Um, but The Departed is good. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, no Country for Old Men. No Country for Old Men. Two thousand and seven. Okay. I don't know if you're going to hate me or not. This is a film that makes me question my manlyhood. Um, this film is beloved by people, especially men. I've watched it about three times. And the reason why I've rewatched it is I'm trying to understand and appreciate why people love it. Mm. I don't like this film. I have a confession. Okay. This is one of the only films since 2000. You haven't these seen? I have not seen. Okay. Watch it and get back to me. Um, I got it. Yeah. People love I mean, this film. Uh, Javier Bardem apparently is amazing. That's the I thing. I love Josh Brolin. So, Javier Bardem plays this character called Anton Chigurh, who's like the, yeah. the the villain. Okay. I thought he was like a, for lack of a better word, excuse me, I don't want to offend anyone, but like a semi-retarded kind of like child molester type. His character was so weird to me. Yeah. That I didn't. The flipping to- the coin and all that. Yeah. I didn't get it. Um Josh Brolin's good in it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it, it's an, and it's got these weird monologues from Tommy Lee Jones that go on for like five minutes. Um, this is a, like considered like the Coen Brothers' best film. I'm not a fan of it. Um, it won a lot of awards. Yeah, yeah. Javier did. Bardem won the Oscar. It, it won best took him picture. to superstarter. Right, and, and I like which is him. crazy considering where he started. Yeah, yeah. He was he was literally an artist, so like you know, painting the the know. backdrops and stuff like that on sets. sets. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, No Country for Old Men is a bit of an uh, an enigma to me. I'm like. Yeah. I don't understand what I'm missing. Right. Um, that doesn't mean I hated the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just, it was kind of weird. I'm not really a fan. So we'll, we'll move on from that one. Okay. Um, okay, good. So Slumdog Millionaire 2008. That's right. I love this movie. This was a very good movie. You've seen it, right? I have seen it. I love the music. One of, one of the few ones out of the last 20 years where it's a, it's a feel good. Yeah, you know, like you feel good. And it's actually quite heavy, but yeah. ultimately it's such a feel good movie. Yeah. It's directed by Danny Boyle. So again, I'm quite proud because yeah. it was a, a British movie that swept go. the Oscars. There you go. The music's phenomenal. It gave the world Dev yeah. Patel. Who and this, I think this is, is one fantastic. that came out of nowhere, really, because it was out it of had nowhere. no fanfare. They, right. they had a nothing budget. Word of mouth yeah. gave it all this acclaim. It became yeah. a huge hit. Won, yeah. won the Oscar. Um, yeah, it was a big surprise that it won Best Picture. Yeah. Uh, but you're right. I mean, I love this movie. And ultimately, uh, it's such a feel-good film. Yeah. Yeah, Slumdog yeah. Millionaire is a great film. Okay, and then we've got, um, okay, The Hurt Locker, 2009. Yeah, I think this I is. I love it. This Do is you? definitely, well, I really liked it. But I would have to say this is definitely, I think, one of the more controversial wins. Because well, it's such a so small big. movie. Yeah. And, and I think people either love it or they hate it. Do you hate it though? No, I don't hate it. See, I it's a film that I appreciate even more each time I watch it. I've seen it about four times. For me, it's like I go I put myself in that in that Jeremy Renner's, you know, position and I go, 
I get it. Yeah. It, it, you're right. It's an odd film. It's Catherine Bigelow. Yeah. She, uh, you know, won the Oscar and yeah. won. You, you're right. It's a very odd film to win Best Picture. Yeah. It really is. It's like yeah. this small war movie. And even yeah. for a war movie, it's yeah. a very small. It's like a character study. It's really right. a showpiece for Jeremy Renner, who it Agreed. made him a star. It He's made him a star. Huge. I agree with you. I love this movie. I don't think it even belongs in this type of category. It's odd that it it's, got it's, all that It's acclaim. an outlier from everything else. And I time. don't mean that yeah. to be disrespectful, no, actually. It was just different. Yeah, because it was such a small, independent movie. Yeah. Um, that said, I've watched it several times. And each time I watch it, I'm like, God, this really is a great film. Yeah. Uh, anyway, The Hurt Locker. Um, mm. Very interesting. Okay, let's see. Okay, so 2010, The King's Speech. Have you seen that? Awesome movie. So my wife loves this film. You don't? Um, I do. Uh, okay. And again, I don't want to be controversial. Watch, watch your words wisely on this one. I love no, Colin okay. Firth. Yeah. Um, I thought he was excellent in it. I thought yeah. he deserved the Best Actor Oscar, which he won. Okay. Um, I thought the film was entertaining. Jeffrey Rush is great in it. Helen Bonham Carter. Yeah. I was a bit surprised that one best picture really? because I didn't think the film as a whole was like very, I don't know, captivating. It was quite slow. And I, I again, I thought it was best for Colin Firth. Yeah. I probably need to rewatch it again to see okay. if I can appreciate it more. Again, my wife loves this movie and she loves Colin Firth. So I won't uh, say too much. Well, there it is. Mr. Darcy. It. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what she's obsessed with him because of that. Probably. Do you like King's speech? Uh, I thought it was fantastic. Okay. Uh, definitely one of my favorites over the last few years. Um, I thought Colin Firth did an amazing job. I love Jeffrey Rush. Almost everything that Jeffrey Rush does, I love. He's fantastic. I, I, he's one of my all time favorite actors. Have um, you seen shine the movie he won the best actor for? It's a little-known Australian movie from the early 90s. Uh, that no, put him I have on not the map. seen that one. He won the Oscar. Check I, will, it out. I will watch that. It's That'll definitely Shine. be the top of my list. Okay. It, his performance yeah. is phenomenal. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, all, all in all, I, I really like I mean, uh, the end scene where he's giving his speech and he's in the room. You know, Jeffrey Rush is trying to, like— a, Finally has that. Finally has that moment, or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. For me, it was it was very it was very thrilling to to see you know, the final scene. I need to rewatch it because it, something I just remembered, which probably wasn't the best way to watch it. I watched it on my laptop on a train in England no, with headphones. Oh, that does not do it justice. That's when I watched it, yeah. and I've only seen it once. Yeah. We own it. I'm gonna watch it again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Let's see. Uh, okay. 2011. Uh, the artist. Did you see that movie? <sighs> I saw bits and pieces. I never saw the whole thing because I, I just, I don't know. It didn't really do it for me. It was a black and white silent movie yeah. um, that I think is a bit of a travesty. But, yeah. And here's why. I'm sorry. No disrespect to everyone who made it. it but yeah. um, one best picture. If you mention this film to people, I guarantee you 90% of them won't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. Honestly, I think this is a, another one of those films where it was like Chicago. Mm. It's something that hadn't been done in so long that Hollywood went, yeah. To some degree, but a lot of people at least know Chicago. Okay. Um, yeah. Here's what, what is interesting is yeah. I watched The Artist and I actually was surprised that I did enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But then I totally forgot about it. And I, I really, I don't, under, you're right. I think this was like a novelty thing. Is that because there were no lines to? Uh... <laughs> yeah, or something. That, you know, <laughs> so I, no well, slow, you know, I remember the dog, you know? the, the cute dog was very famous yeah. and then the dog died in real life. But um, right. yeah, it. I don't know. It's it's a weird film. And even the actor who became quite famous from it, yeah. he's kind of vanished. He did yeah, one yeah. or two things and never saw done. him again. I have not seen him anything in a while. Um, yeah, so it, I don't know. I think that one doesn't really make sense. Okay, okay good. Argo, 2012. Yeah. Yeah. That's Argo, an interesting one to me. Argo, <laughs> fuck yourself. So Ben Affleck yeah. directed that. He starred in it. When I watched it in a the theater, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, I need to rewatch it because I don't remember it so well. Uh, um, I remember it very well. Now, some people have said it doesn't really stand up so well. I actually it was only a couple of years ago, right? I can't evaluate that because I haven't seen it again. Wow! I also haven't been dying to see it again. Like I saw it the first time; it was yeah. very tense. It was very well made. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, I want to rewatch it okay. to to evaluate for myself. So you really like that film? I I very much liked it. Um, uh, Ben Affleck did a very good job uh, directing. I don't. I mean, his acting was solid, but I don't think it was some, like, out of left field, no. holy moly, you know, he should be getting some nomination or something like that. But he did solid. But the um, the, the screenwriting, fantastic. The directing, 
Fantastic. And, you know, all around solid performances. So it was it was a it was a gripping, gripping tale. Yeah. What I remember the most is that the final scene at the on the plane at the yeah. airport, the the tension was incredibly done. It yes. was so palpable. Every second of that. And actually, yeah. the my favorite actor of the film, John Goodman. Oh, he's great in that. Uh, yeah. He's another one of my like, you know, absolute top favorite I love actors. Goodman. Almost, he steals a scene in almost every yeah thing he does i can watch him in anything i agree he's fantastic Mm -hmm. all right we are almost there we've spanned almost what almost 100 years years. yeah 90 90 years years. okay 2013 12 12 years Years a slave Slave. did you like that movie i thought it was entertaining uh for me it was kind of like one of those stories where because it was it was for the most part real Mm. um that it kind of hit you hit you at home like oh my god you know, feeling what that person went through and everything like that. Um, so that's what it was for me. And I, uh, Michael Fassbender did a crazy good job as good. So, so. Um, I I'm terrible with his name. Chiwetel Ifwar, yeah. who was the main lead. Don't ask me to pronounce it. I thought he was solid. Yeah. Again, this is a film that I think um, works with performances. Great. As a film, I wasn't impressed. I thought it was kind of over dramatic, too yeah. long, very yeah. depressing. Um, but yeah, Michael Fassbender was mm. incredible. He yeah. played that villainous role, yeah. and then the uh, that that African uh, American lady who won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress, Lupita Nyong'o. Yeah, she was phenomenal. Well done. You yeah. got that right. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> um, for the win, you know, and it's got Benedict Cumberbatch in it. It's got yeah. uh, Brad Pitt in it. It's, the, it's got this who's who's cast. Yeah, it was a film of performance. I thought it was really overblown for all yeah. its accolades, just personally. Well, to be honest with you, it was, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, these trends, we keep right. talking about it and yeah. everything like that. It was like, there was a trend there for a few years of anything that was either slavery or African-Americans and breaking out of their chains, Django Unchained, uh, right. you know, 12 Years yeah, a Slave. That film was awesome. That uh, shit crazy, and but then awesome. <laughs> even after that, there was the uh, the one, um, the, the slave uprising one, which had a lot of controversy. It was going to be uh, right. Uh, well, that one was great. That was oh. back from the nineties. Oh. But I'm talking. There was a one just like two years ago, which was uh, and it was getting oh. all the hoopla. Like uh, it sold for like twenty million dollars. Birth of a and, Nation. That was a go. good film. But was the it? guy. Oh, I watched because it. it got all this hoopla, and then because of the controversy with the director, oh, and then his it just rape died case out. in it real just life. Fizzled. It died. That film. It's so unfortunate because I saw it on HBO. Is it good? It's a good film. I haven't seen it because because of fizzled. I thought. Okay, it must not be good. No, the film was phenomenal. I'm gonna have to see. And it. if that guy didn't have the real life scandal right. in in his life, right. yeah, because he, he got would a be a star. Rape allegations. He would be a star. Charges from like a decade ago came right. up again, right? Which was kind of weird. But anyway, okay, um, but it's a pity because I guarantee you that film would have been a huge Oscar contender. Wow! If that scandal hadn't been in case, I watched okay. it on HBO and I was very yeah, impressed. Yeah, because there was all kinds of buzz on. That. It's a brutal yeah. movie. Okay. It's very good. Got it. Um, and it's certainly better than Twelve Years a Slave, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we'll move on. I mean, again, Twelve Years a Slave had great performances. Yeah. I didn't think it was a great movie. Yeah. Um, but okay. All right, 2014, Birdman. Birdman. Um, that was such a weird, quirky movie. It was. I loved it though. Here's yeah. why I loved it. Okay. Um, I I have a soft spot for Michael Keaton. There you go. I mean, the yeah. dude's Beetlejuice. He's I Batman. totally. I'm I'm down with you. What was that movie he did back in the '90s where he was the dad and he was filming himself because he was he was dying of cancer? My life with Nicole yeah. Kidman. That's for. I don't that's know why I know that. That's deep the cut. movie that affected me and why I've always liked Michael Keaton. That's strange that you said that because that's, that's a movie. film I didn't even know people knew about, and I yeah. feel the same way. Yeah. But I knew him before that. But that yeah. film always touched me. It was like yeah. a little movie. Yeah. Um, Number one, it was just such a great vehicle as a comeback for Michael Keaton. Yeah. How um, fun was that? Yeah. Uh, he's such a beloved actor. Everyone was rooting for him. It, so it was that actually was great. heartbreaking. I don't know if you remember at the uh, Oscars and he was like, he had a speech all ready to go. Oh, yeah. Thought he was going to win because That's he had right. won the he Golden lost. Globe. Yeah. And then Eddie Redmayne gets called right. and you could see like they have the, the gifts or, or a gif um, of his face and he's like. You could see him deflated, yeah. and you're like, oh. Ed, Eddie Redmayne blew it out of the park. He, did. he, kind of he, deserved, did. he deserved it, it but, yeah. but that was um, tough. Yeah, so Michael uh, Michael Keaton's comeback is what Birdman will always be known for, but also the way that film was shot, that it looks like it's one long take. 
yeah. throughout the entire film I thought yeah. was so unique. Yeah. But also the supporting roles in that film are like Emma Stone was fantastic. She did. She did uh, a good Edward job. Norton was fantastic. They both yeah. got nominated. Yeah. And then it had a bunch of other great Zach Galifianakis is good in that movie, Naomi I Watts. Know. Um, so I, I love Birdman. I've yeah. seen it a few times. I need to rewatch it. I mean, again, it's only been out a couple of years, but um, I, I like that. Did you so, like it? I did. I did like it. But tell me this. I never quite got. So did he actually commit suicide at the no, end? No, or? that's the point. It leaves it to your interpretation. I know it does, but, I, but it, it's like one of those things with uh, you know, with Christopher Nolan's uh, Inception. You kind of go, uh, I yeah. want to know. Is he still in is the he, is dream he whatever? Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. in Inception, you don't really know because it never stops. Because exactly. the screen it goes just back. Cuts. So that one really does leave it to your interpretation. Um, However, in Birdman, this is my take on it. It shows him um, the window open. It shows her looking down. But then if you remember, watch it again. And he floats up. No, well, you don't see it. The final scene, the final expression on her face is her looking up and smiling. So it gives you the impression that basically he actually is... This, is ascending this, you know, to... bird man flying person. Yeah. It, it gives you the impression that he didn't die, that somehow he's maybe held on to something or he yeah. actually does sprout wings. Right. And the moral um, of the story is, no, you do not bring a live gun on stage. So <laughs> just, let's just not go yeah. there. Um, I mean, that movie is very indie, artsy. I really very enjoyed so. it. Yeah. Very much so. Good. Okay, good. Um, let's see. Uh, so 2015? Spotlight. Spotlight. So... Um, I actually like that movie. Yeah. I mean, it's all about the scandal with the uh, what priests and sexual abuse yeah, of children in Boston, um, which had been Boston. gone for you know because that because that was you know, within the U.S. That's really the hub in terms of the Catholic Church. You saw you the know? movie. I saw the movie. You liked it. Uh, I thought it was very good. I thought it was well done. I was impressed that a film. That was essentially just about investigation. It doesn't yeah. have a lot of meat to it. It's no. really just a bunch of people talking and, right. you know, yeah. but it was in gross. Michael Keaton, yeah. Rachel McAdams. Yeah. Um, it was Mark very, Ruffalo. very yeah. well done. Yeah, I agree. And and I think what carried that movie as well is another one of these movies where it's, uh, you know, based on a true story. Right. And things that you just kind of like, you didn't know. Maybe it was in the news here and there, whatever the kind of stuff. And then now it hits you in the face. And you go, oh, my God. Like, you get the full understanding of it. It's like kind of like Schindler's List. And as you go, wow. Yeah. You know? Apart from I was entertained, but I'll admit. I don't know that I would go back and rewatch that movie, but for yeah. some reason, Schindler's uh, List, yeah. I will, even though that's a tough movie to yeah. watch again. So I don't know how well it will stand the test well, of time. Well, yes, yeah, Sch- Schindler's List was definitely more cinematic. Of course. You know, there was a quality, there was an artistic whatever. Spotlight was very, like, down to business. Here's this frame. Here's what they're doing. Here, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's yeah. far less in terms of the cinematic artistry. Yeah. All right, good. All right, that's Spotlight. And then here we are. So we are all the way up to present. So last year, 2016, Moonlight. Nope. Did oh, did you watch it? I did. And you didn't like I it? I actually got a pre-screening because uh, where I lived, um, one of the actors lives in Florida. Really? And uh, Well, actually, it was filmed in Florida. The entire mm. movie was filmed in Florida. And most of the uh, guys behind the camera, the director, everybody, Florida State. Barry Jenkins. Right, exactly. It's all Florida State, Uh, you know, and so one of the uh, several of the actors were from Florida and one of the actors uh, came in and did a special screening. This was Hmm. before the movie was released. Wow. Uh, So this is right after Toronto Film Festival. And then I got to see it. One of the pre-screeners, everything like that. And people loved it. And you didn't. I didn't. So I don't. You is know, it and that I it just didn't speak to you, or was honestly, it because of the theme? Or? I don't know. I, it, you're very solid performances, hmm. uh, especially the gentleman. Uh, I forgot his name. Uh, the guy that won Oscar for supporting oh, actor, Maharashara Ali. Yeah, completely agree. He did deserve that. It was very good acting performances. The story itself, I don't know. It, it was. It was such a. The reason why I feel like it got all the accolades that it hmm. did is because it it took a an aspect, a story of something that had never been told. Well, I mean, it's a gay love story with African American. Right. I mean, that's like very in low there. income, like you know, yeah. all the kind of, like it's it has never that's been told, never at least that I can ever cinema. recall. Yeah. So for me, that is why it got all the attention, all the accolades. Now the action performances were solid and everything like that. But I would not put this particular film on a cinematic level of uh, some of the other uh, best. So films. let me tell you, I'm, I saw Moonlight. 
Yeah. I did think it was a well-made movie. Okay. The score was beautiful. The acting was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, but you're right. I was, this is no disrespect to the film. Yeah. I was actually in the same uh, page as you in that it was so overhyped. When I watched it, I was like, this is a good film. But so I didn't... you had that expectation going in way high. Very high. And also what was odd is Marhara Shah Ali, I'm not going to say his name right, who yeah. won the Oscar. Mm-hmm. I was surprised. His performance was decent. I didn't think it was Oscar winning. Really? And I love that guy. He He's uh, fantastic in House of Cards. Yeah. He's in uh, Luke Cage. I really like him. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, last year's Oscars was so surreal because yeah, La La Land got announced as yeah, the best Yeah, can we do that as an honorable winner? mention? <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is yeah. the superior movie because I've watched La La Land five yeah. times since, and that movie is magical to me. I absolutely think it should have won Best Picture because I think it will stand the test of time. Yeah. I understand why Moonlight was given the award yeah. because it's kind of, I guess, like a historical moment. For a film like that. That's what I'm saying. It was groundbreaking. Right. And it never been told. It is a beautifully made film. Um, it and it is good performances. But yeah. yeah, I think because of the hype, when I watched it, I was like, yeah. it was good, but I didn't love it. Right. That makes All right. Sense. Uh, Matt, we are done. That's pretty oh, incredible. We did 90 years. Woo. Woo. Well, look, um, since okay. we're coming into uh, the end of 2017. Yeah. What are your quote unquote predictions for best picture for the Oscars? Well, the Oscar? obviously, we're getting right into uh, that time period where Oscar they start season. releasing it and everything like that. Uh, the Post is getting a lot of um, Spielberg's uh, latest buzz with on it. Streep and Hanks. Uh, to me, it feels like just pre before seeing it feels like it's very much a, a, a Spotlight 2.0. Um, you know, that sort of the thing. Post, you mean? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's also Spielberg, so you can never write him out, especially with Streep and Hanks. I mean, right. that's like a trifecta of gold. Yeah, but to be honest with you, the thing that, uh, and I did see this one, is um, Lady Bird. I have that one is going it. to. I it think that is going 100% to has a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It, it's phenomenal movie. Um, it, it's interesting. It shows a slice of life, which it, it's like one of those films where. You are completely immersed in this one tiny little slice of life, and there is there's not a single scene that's wasted. Hmm. All the characters are true, hmm. no matter what character. Really great performances, especially the leading lady. It's Saoirse she was, Ronan. She did Brooklyn. Yeah, um, and it's directed by Greta Gerwig. That's right. It, it is a phenomenal movie in being able to take a slice of life that you've never seen before, or you probably have never seen, and then going, here's the the ultimate reality. This is exactly mm-hmm. everything that goes on in this person's existence. And you get it. Yeah, at the end of you I've, go, wow, I've heard I get it completely. nothing but praise for this film, so yeah. I want to see it. Yeah. So um, it, it, it's more of like an indie one. It's not some big Saving Private Ryan overarching, right. you know, you feel like you had a huge experience. No, it's here's a story. They told the story, A to B. And uh, no wasted motion. You, you I'm going to be interested to see how many wins it gets. I guarantee you yeah. it will get nominations because it's so acclaimed. Yeah. That would be my pick. That would yeah. be my early pick. Any other ones that mm. you've seen? Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other. Uh, well, that's fine. I'll three tell you. Three billboards is probably, is probably going to be. Um, I've seen a little bit of it. Um, I need to watch the whole thing. But that's getting uh, a lot of buzz. I think the performances are really, really good. Uh, but I think really the post is probably going to dominate a lot okay. uh, of the attention because of who's in it. Right. But uh, definitely Lady Bird. Okay. So for me, Dunkirk, I absolutely loved. Did yeah, you watch it? Uh, I did love that. But in what categories? Because I think it will dominate anything that's technical. But do you think it really will dominate uh, Best Picture? Director and picture, I think. And mm-hmm. then also, I mean, Blade Runner 2049 that blew was, me away. That was, yeah. It blew yeah. me away. Yeah. Um, I understand what you're saying. I mean, look, yeah. you can never write out Spielberg. Yeah. Um, but uh, Blade Runner 2049, I wish, but um, I, I actually don't think it will. No. But Dunkirk, I, I think, is a really strong contender. I, I really I, I think it will get nominations. I don't know that it'll necessarily win. Yeah, I actually think much. the Disaster Artist will actually get some nominations. Uh, it was uh, so I think well James done. Franco will be a slam dunk. Yeah, it was so Honestly. Did you see the movie? I haven't seen it. Other people have been saying so many good things about it. So. He nails Tommy Wiseau D- completely. That's, from everything incredible. that I can see in terms of seeing clips of the room and seeing him, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, 100%. 
All right, man. Well, that's just a little preview. Uh, we'll see February 2018. Uh, well, look, this has been a supersized episode. We yeah. did it, though, man. We uh, went yeah. through it's 90 huge. years of best pictures. Uh, we talked about a lot. We had quite a lot in common, some not, but that's all good, man. Maybe we'll have to do this in 10 years and we'll have the, the centennial. <laughs> exactly. We'll regroup and see mm. what it's like. All right, Matt. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on. Uh, again, no you want to uh, plug the listeners, let them know where they can find you? Sure. Um, you can uh, find me. My website is themattsharp.com. That's T-H-E, mattsharp.com. Exactly how it sounds. Uh, or you can catch me on Instagram. That would be uh, at mattsharpactor. And uh, again, that's all my escapades from acting to screenwriting. All right, buddy. Well, we did it. Let's go get a drink. We deserve it. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for listening to another new episode of Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast. As always, please do follow us on all of our social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Tony the Movie Guy. And also, please, please, please um, rate and review our podcast on iTunes. It's extremely helpful, and I ask for it every week, and I know it gets annoying, but <laughs> it is really helpful, and so I'd really appreciate it if you could do that. And always... You can email us at Tony the Movie Guy Podcast at gmail.com if you would like to leave us any comments or just say hello. We'd love to hear from you. Until next week, bye bye. <laughs>